We have a cup final for you, the inaugural Satanta Shield final. We're at the recreation ground. The destination decided on a toss of a coin, and it means it's the Blue Square Premier League leaders, Aldershot Town, against Rushton and Diamonds, who are 15th in the league. All that's out of their minds tonight, though, because it's a cup final. It's a terrific atmosphere as well, and it's a chance for both these sides to win their first national trophy. Concessions for the Aldershot fans, and free entry for the Rushton fans make it an occasion to remember. Both these clubs have played four games to get here, and in Aldershot's case, of course, extra time in quarter-final at Crawley, and then here, when we were here in the semi-finals, not only extra time, but penalties to finally defeat the stubborn resistance of Woking. And that assured their place as the Southern winners to meet Rushton and Diamonds, the Northern winners. The two teams will meet the guests of the evening, Mr. Trevor East, the director of sports, and to Santa Sports, and on his left, Brian Lee, the chairman of the conference. And perhaps it doesn't matter at what level, a cup final is a chance for these players to win a medal, put some silverware in their pocket. Will there be a few butterflies there at the moment? Oh, Steve, there's got to be butterflies. That falls on, because if you haven't got butterflies in belly, even before every game, there's, you shouldn't really be in the game. It's, Football's all about emotions, and especially when you're getting cup finals. First thing on your thought, I want to win this one. You don't want to end up losing a cup final. You want, you just want to play your best because you're out there in front of your family and friends. But the one thing you want to do, you want to come off the pitch with a winner's medal in your hands. Ricky Newman, who will be skippering all the shots tonight, just introducing his players to our dignitaries tonight. Of course, for all the shots, it could be the first of two trophies with themselves sitting 14 points clear at the moment at the top of the Blue Square Premier. I think Gary, Gary Pollock is one of the few people who won't actually even talk about it. I think a lot of us already believe they've already won it, but Gary won't say it until he knows it's actually there, the cup is sitting next to him. But the one thing about this lot tonight, his players, is that they're going to want to win this. It's going to, it could be the start of it. If you talk about winning one thing, you want to go on there and do doubles. Great chance for Aldershot. And Gary Hill saying that Rushton have had an inconsistent season, but it could end with silverware and the Satanta Shield. Well, the team news, Aldershot have rotated their squad once more. They're without Scott Davis, who begins a six-match suspension this evening. They continue with Mikel Jaimez in goal, who's played every game in this competition. No Nicky Bull tonight. Smith, Newman and Straker return to the back four. Donnelly, who's scored twice in four games in the Satanta Shield, and Chalmers return in midfield. And Junior Mendes is preferred up front, alongside fit again leading scorer John Grant for Gary Waddock. We line up with a 4-4-2. Mikel in goal, Dean Smith right back, Dave Winfield, Ricky Newman, Anthony Straker. Midfield four of Kirk Hudson, um, Louis Chalmers, Scott Donnelly and Joel Grant. Up front, Junior Mendes and John Grant. This season, Scott Donnelly has grabbed his chance in cup competitions. It's only the form of Lewis Chalmers and Ben Harding that has hindered him. He loves to run at defenders from midfield, reminiscent of Gaza, and scored a wonderful goal against Crawley in the quarterfinals. Problems for Rushton tonight, they're without Charles and Demino, who's been recalled from his loan spell by South End. Kukoran and Platt are both cup tied. So into the team come Curtis Asano, John Challoner, and Tom Shaw. Dean Howell also returns at left back. El Colotti drops to the bench for Gary Hill. There were some changes in the Halifax game, but uh, the team what's uh, selected starting tonight in a 4 4 2 formation. We uh, Del Robertson goal, back four of uh, Curtis Asano. Chris Hope, Phil Gulliver, Dean Howe, midfield four. Left-hand side, Marcus Kelly. Then we've got Curtis Woodhouse, Tom Shaw, Andy Burgess, and Michael Rankin and John Chain up front. In one-off situations such as tonight, you need players who can pull something out of the hat. Andy Burgess is one of those players with his close control and ability to use either foot. He's going to be a problem for young Dean Smith. Pre-match huddle for Rushton and Diamonds then. First chance of two trophies for Gary Waddock in his first season in charge at Aldershot Town. And what a season he's had. Simon Hooper has made the journey from Swindon to officiate this cup final. Gary Hill in charge of Rushton, of course, just over a year. 
since he arrived, 14 months to be precise, could be marking his first full season in charge with a trophy as well. And it will be Rushton in all yellow tonight to get us underway, attacking the goal where the fans who gained free entry to this cup final are standing. We must have a winner, as has been the case throughout this competition. And if need be, and it was needed for Aldershot here in the semi-finals, we will have extra time and then the possible drama once again of a penalty shootout. I just wonder if we get that far, whether Joel Grant will be allowed to take his spot kick again after his effort against Woking here. Here's the man who scored in that game, Anthony Straker, the left back, who's caught the eye of a lot of people this season. Remember, he never scored a senior goal before that semi-final. And then he rifled one in from 25 yards on his weaker right foot. That's right, it was a hell of a strike it was as well. I mean, obviously, that's a new string to his bow. But the one thing we do know about it, which I talked to Gary about before the game, the lad can attack, can attack as good as any fullback I've seen in a long, long time. Loves to get forward. Still only 19 years of age as well. Mikel Jaimez, who saved the penalty in that shootout, remains in goal. His cut touched on by Junior Mendes to Joel Grant. He couldn't get round Asano. Well, Joel Grant, you'll notice incidentally, has V Grant on the back of his shirt there. That is because his middle name is Valentino. We've sold that particular conundrum throughout the season. Do you, do you share any particular middle name like that? Nothing like that at all, nothing as glamorous. Here come Rushton on the attack. That was Chaloner, and he's won a corner. First corner of the game goes the way of Rushton and Diamonds. Just like normal, what we see when we do come older shot, a lot of teams normally do get pulled off for counter attacks. It's gone short. Ricky Newman got that away, who's skippering all the shot tonight. Reese Day not in the 16, incidentally, forward by Woodhouse. Dean Smith to Donnelly. Really has impressed when he's had the chance in this competition this season, Scott Donnelly. Scored that wonderful goal in the quarter-finals, he also scored in his debut in round five at St Albans. What I like about him, he, ne he never panics on the ball, we just saw him there, he was closed down, didn't just look to hit it anyway, he tried his best to play himself out of trouble, in the end he couldn't keep it in play, but I'm sure we'll see a lot of him during the game. Chris Hope, who's the Rushton skipper. Woodhouse was fouled by Hudson there. Curtis Woodhouse, five straight wins as a boxing professional so far. His fifth, and he came last month. Now the chance to win a winner's medal as a footballer in the Satanta Shield final. How? Take this free kick with his left foot for Rushton. Good flick on as well. Gulliver, it was the centre half who was trying to swing his foot at it. All the shot, get it clear. Woodhouse once more. Rankin, good turn of pace away from Straker. And then a missed kick by Newman. And it's a corner to Rushton. Yeah, it's good pressure by Rushton at the moment. They're just work, really work, trying to work the fullbacks at the moment. See, Rankin pulled across up against Straker, and again, Straker's allowed the ball to go past him. Weren't the greatest of crosses by Rankin, but the ball actually, well, certainly caused Ricky Newman a problem. Just hope the skipper is up as well, the 33 year old. Kelly delivers the looping corner. It was Hope who was challenging. There was an infringement there, and it'll be a free kick to Aldershot. At the moment, they haven't got in their rhythm at the moment, older shot, haven't got a lot of pass in their team that loves to get hold of the ball, and make a few passes and then try and build their play up through Lewis Chalmers. And with Donnelly out there now, instead of Harding or Davis, I'm sure both of them will be fighting to get hold of the ball just to try and integrate the play and just trying to really get Joel Grant going and even try and get John Grant going through the middle, trying to pick off, pick off holes either side of the centre-halves. Woodhouse to Dean Howe. 
Ashley overran that. Here by Smith. John Grant with Woodhouse. Woodhouse fouling. Great strength from John Grant as far as Aldershot were concerned. Back, of course, after injury, the leading scorer. Quickly taken, and now he's offside. So unlucky as well. Couldn't couldn't be much in that one. System referee put his flag straight up. And we've seen it's just looking about half a yard. It was close, really, really close. Fell asleep a little bit rushed in there, got away with it. Well, he was a big mess for them. In the nine games he was out with that injury. Came back in there, draw at Troyles than the bottom club. Both sides ending with ten men that night. Marcus Kelly for Rushton. Now Howell. On the second ball from Hudson. Positive play from Howell. Godley to come across with the block. Powerful player, Dean Howell. Loves to get forward the ball at his feet. Great strength as well. And Curtis Hudson. Curtis Hudson has really got to work a bit harder when he's defending, be strong on his tackles as well. Forward by Asano, then went by Donnelly, then the ball from Woodhouse to Rankin. And the effort from this is John Chaloner, who's being asked to play the more central role tonight. Just seeing there, Chaloner normally plays midfield, but he's, I think he's just trying to play behind Michael Rankin, just trying to play off of him, kind of playing a 4 5 1 formation at the moment. Chris Hope in his second season at Gillingham, 35 years of age. Tom Gillingham, I should say, when he had six years. Will he be the man to lift the Satanta Shield tonight? Fairly open start, Parks. Certainly is. At the moment, Russian are the strongest side, the team who's caused a few problems at the other end. Haven't really got going at all, older shot. Suits that man there really more than anything. That's what he wants to do. He wants definitely wants to break up older shots play. He hasn't got his assistant all season alongside him tonight. Kevin Hales has left the club this week. It certainly has, and I spoke to Kevin today, and he actually did say to me, I do get opportunity to wish Rushton all the best this evening. Well, Asana has won a corner there for Rushton. It's going to be a good battle down that side as well. Asano versus Joel Grant. We're talking about two players, a lot of pace. I think maybe if Joel Grant's going to get a lot of joy against Asano, it's going to have to be a bit his ability on the ball and his guile rather than trying to beat him with pace. Plenty forward here for Rushton. Cleared by Newman. Then by Hudson, picked up by Woodhouse. Good early ball to Chaloner. Woodhouse once more. Offside flag is up. That was wonderful play by Woodhouse there. Kept the play going really well. Here's Joel Grant. Three waiting for a cross. He's around the first man. Now he's taking it on Asano. He managed to stop it. And it's picked up by Burgess now for Rushton. That's 2-0 to Asano at the moment. That's twice he's trying to go past him, Joel Grant. And he hasn't really had any joy at the moment in time. It's going to be an intriguing battle, that one. Well, Curtis Asano is on a season-long loan from Reading in the Premier League. His 47th game for Rushton tonight. And on loan last season, he had 10 games here at Aldershot. The link, of course, with Martin Cool from Reading, assistant manager here. So I know some of these players, including this man, John Grantwell. Here's Hudson, that was a lovely ball. He just couldn't quite get enough purchase on the cross. Well, that's the first time we've really seen Aldershot get into the game, but again, it was all about the pace of Kirk Hudson, which is his great strength. Tom Shaw must feel very, very lucky. A little bit lazy on his run there, didn't track the runner, and it was all, all about the end, the lack of quality at the end. He was happy with that play. It's the first time he's seen Aldershot really get going this evening. Kirk, Kirk Hudson has 12 goals this season. They've all come in the last 22 games, and he scored in three of the four Satanta Shield games this season to get to the final. He also scored in that penalty shootout against Woking as well. And he's just signed a new contract here at Aldershot. Asano's throw. Rankin's header, Chaloner trying to get on the end of it. 
putting Winfield under pressure. Winfield did well in the end. He did well in the end, but he should have dealt with it early. He let the ball bounce for far too long. It allowed John Chandler to get close to him. Just got to move his feet quicker and just get the ball out of play. Sometimes you can play too much at a set, as a centre half. Here's Burgess in his second spell. For Oxford, he turned that for a season. Shooting from distance. Jaimez had that covered. But they made it look made it look almost difficult there, really. It just looked like straight into his arms, it's going wide. But Jaimez was a little bit worried about it, maybe didn't know where his near post was. Just seen it, yard and a half wide in the end. Chris Hope's header. Now Joel Grant for all the shot Masano again, sticking closely to him. Fascinating battle, that one. Oh, it's, it's going to be Steve Asano was straight on to in the moment. He got the ball, Joe Grant. He won't allow him to turn and face him. He's won that battle twice so far, but he just doesn't want to do it all the time. He's not going to allow Joel Grant to turn. Doesn't want, does not want to face him at all. Dean Smith, the right back to Kirk Hudson. Another throw for all the shot, not going to have a play. Two Garys, Waddock and Hill. Head to head tonight for just the second time. Earlier in the season, that was the three points for Aldershot. Here at the recreation ground. It's away by Howell. Aldershot's last game of the season is actually away at Rushton in the league. They will hope it is all sorted and it pretty much should be by then, barring a big footballing disaster. <laughs> that would be a disaster upon disaster if that was to happen. Now Hudson just getting goal side of Howell. Can he get the cross in? Nobody's won the corner. Warm applause from the home crowd. Yeah, he's made something out of nothing there, Kirk Hudson. Just the ball into the corner, just in behind the defence. It's a good race there. Dean Howell won at the end, but Kirk Hudson definitely made something out of nothing. made their way forward for this. Donnelly's corner. What an effort that was from Lewis Chalmers, just hung out at the edge of the penalty area, and Dale Roberts in the rushing goal was equal to it. Again, we're just seeing the ball comes out, it's cleared. I mean, it's cleared by Chris Hope, it comes out to Lewis Chalmers. Good shot that was, but that was an even better save. Would have seen it late, the goalkeeper, but it was a good left hand to pull it over the crossbar. Dale Roberts, who's on loan from Nottingham Forest at Rushton, has been since January. He might be busy here as well. But he uh, was fouled, according to the referee, and it will be a Rushton free kick. Well, Dale Roberts playing for the 17th time tonight for Rushton. He's kept seven clean sheets in the previous 16. This was the save once again. So he was, and Lewis Chalmers, just instinctive strike that was, just comes to him, just takes it early, and what a great strike that was as well. But like I said before, it was an even better save. Oh, by Shaw, but the offside flag was up against Rankin. And against Chaloner. That was a very, very sloppy free kick. Now with Rankin from Rushton. Lovely ball from him to Burgess. Five yellow shirts in the penalty area here. Chaloner's free header. Golden opportunity for Rushton, and he hasn't taken it. Oh, he should have scored on that one there, John Chandler. Scores a lot of goals in midfield, but drifted into the box late. I don't know what Dave Winfield was thinking there. Just trying too hard to play there. Should have just tried to settle things down. And they've got away a bit lightly. They've, they've done well, they've kept the ball well, rushed them. And it's just delivering the box, goes out wide. And what a ball in that was by Burgess, but it's Chandler's run. And I think he should have scored that one. Winfield just puts his 
Head up in the air thinking, how lucky am I? He does have seven goals in his last ten games, John Challoner. Perhaps he should have eight in his last eleven now. But encouraging for Russian and Diamonds. This is Shaw. This is now Rankin. Excellent tackle from Newman. Alderson have a player down, who is Winfield. Woodhouse is now going to play it out. So Winfield can get some treatment. Yeah, he's jumped and I think he's landing funny, but again, he's allowed the ball to bounce and he's allowed Rankin just to use his strength against him. He has to attack the ball earlier, Dave Winfield. Well, let's find out what Gary Hill thinks about the first quarter an hour. He's with Rebecca. Opening 15 minutes, Gary, how happy are you? Yeah, very pleased, you know. Uh, started brightly, confidently, and uh, three or four corners. Very unlucky there, good move, great switch in play. Marcus Kelly got the ball early there, uh, intercepted it. Michael Rankin, great change, great ball from Burge. I'm ashamed, you know, John Chandler would be disappointed he ain't scored. But very pleased, we've just got to be aware of the uh, quick throw-ins, quick free kicks. They're very lively, and that's why they're top of the league. Very good side. And your keeper's made a great save down the other end. Yeah, great save, you know, and uh, very pleased with that. They're probably doing a lot of good in respect to confidence. Thanks, Gary. Cheers, Thank appreciate you. it. Winfield is still getting treatment. I just think he should have dealt with it earlier, but I just think, oh, he just goes, it just looks, might have tweaked the ligaments on the inside of his knee. Just look at his, his left, his left, wee. <laughs> Sorry about the noise there, just didn't look very bring nice. Back some memories there, oh, Parks. It, it was, oh, just saw that horrible for me. I've, it's not good when you see players land like that. I just hope that, hope that it's OK and he can carry on. Just looks worse than what it really was. 20-year-old playing his 73rd game for Aldershot tonight. Won't want to come off. Right certainly a concern for his manager. Rock <laughs> here, the defender is the obvious replacement if they feel he can't continue. Meanwhile, that was Shaw going through. For Rushton. Oh, this should have looked dangerously at the moment. I just don't think they're defending properly. They're allowing the ball to bounce around too much. And the one thing that Rushton have got, they have got strength. They have got a lot of strength in that forward line. And it's causing problems. Winfield is running back on, which is a good sight for all the shot fans. He's gone to Mark Gulliver from this set piece. The two it was who went for the ball. Winfield coming out on top. Marcus Kelly to Woodhouse. I've got to say Rushton are on top at the moment. They certainly are at the moment. Playing the game at their, at their tempo and not allowing Oldershot to dictate the game at all is what Oldershot like to do. Burgess with the challenge on Straker. by Asano, Rankin appealing for the throw and Rushton have got it, remember Rushton have conceded just one goal in their road to the final, that was against Kidderminster, Winfield's in the wars again because of that high foot from Chaloner, you see that one, John Chandler, you know, you see it, the ball's there, he's just put his no intent at all. It's just all about Dave Winfield bending up, bending down to try to head the ball. I'm sure Gary's a little bit worried, just wants to be 100% sure his knee's right because still a few important games to play. He does want to lose him at this moment in time. Deflected, and that is an older shot corner. Yeah, that was the first time we've seen Scott Donnelly bursting forward and just just great run between the centre half and fullback. Ball goes across the Mendes, maybe could have laid it just to his right to John Grant, just outside the pitch. He was asking for it. But if you're centre forwards and you want to move forward in the world of football, you want to score goals, you're going to want to take shots like that. Three and eight games for Junior Mendes since his arrival here in February. Donnelly. 
gone across to take the corner for older shot. Remember the last time this happened. Lewis Chalmers was waiting on the edge of the penalty area. And he's not too far away from there again. That's Winfield who's made his way forward. The thing about it as well, though, it works out the same as well. He's going to get on the ball because there's no one there to actually pick up Lewis Chalmers. Donnelly's delivery. And all the way through in the end, the goalkeeper backpedaled. Hudson will try and get there. Asano got there in front of him. Gary Waddock's 53rd game in charge tonight, looking for his 38th win, and of course his first trophy, before he hopes to go on and lift the league championship. Forward by Kelly for Rushton. And Winfield's in the wars again, he was caught there by Chalmer. That wasn't a good challenge by John Chandler there. The referee straight away, straight away, just went to his pocket. He knew that was a bad challenge on Dave Winfield. Well, he's waved everybody away. Simon Hooper, the referee. Certainly going to be a yellow card for Chandler, the first of this cup final. Well, I'm just pleased that Dave Winfield is OK. That was an awful challenge. That was, can't be any complaints about that. Well, it seemed people get sent off for raising arms. Well, that was an awful challenge. That's the first yellow card of the evening. Poor Dave Winfield's been on the, mo and the end of most things so far. Thankfully, we've been able to carry on. Forward by Newman to Hudson. Now Straker. Down on the back with him. Don't forget, of course, we'll keep you banging today with the game in the Blue Square Premier that's going on tonight. The bottom side draws that an Exeter game that was postponed from a few months ago. It's nil-nil. Exeter win that. They go fifth in the playoffs, and you'll be able to see Exeter's next game on Satanta Sports on Saturday. And what a game! They go to Stevenage. Join us on Satanta Sports One from five o'clock on Saturday. Right closing there, that was there. Donnelly to Mendes. Here by Gulliver. That's all come about just by the sheer hard work of Dean Smith and Joel Grant. Chalmers into Junior Mendes. Plenty of players in support. One is Hudson. He was closed down. Then it came to Donnelly. We've seen him strike them this season. That one wasn't too far away. That wasn't far away at all, that one. He just comes onto it late, and he's trying to find the corner. He knew exactly what he was doing. Didn't just kick through it aimlessly. He was trying to find that top left-hand corner. He was nowhere near it. Dale Roberts, unlucky. 21-year-old goalkeeper. On loan from Forrest, made that terrific save to deny Lewis Chalmers. Rankin's header, forward by Straker. Woodhouse to Kelly. Now Howell. Flag is down. And that just ran away from Challenge. There was a slight hesitation there. It was, I don't think it was any doubt it was onside. It was a good run again from John Chandler. Just coming from that deeper position, just behind Rankin. They've got to be aware of it, the two centre halves. Joel Grant, who's across on this right-hand side for all the shot now, around Woodhouse, but not sure that Woodhouse committed the foul before then, free kick to all the shot. I just think Woodhouse, Curtis Woodhouse just got a bit dizzy. Woodhouse step over, is in front of him. Here's Hudson, a more direct player, stopped by Asano. Newman, John Grant to chase, very important interception by Hope. 
Now Hudson, John Grant trying to get back on side, and Hudson off balance and off target. Yeah, he's done well to follow up on that one, Kirk Hudson. It was Joel Grant initially chased the ball through. He couldn't pass it to Joel Grant. He's coming from an offside position. Had to take the shot himself. Was never balanced for it. It's getting better for older shot now. Well, we've heard from Gary Hill. Let's redress the balance and hear from Gary Waddock with Rebecca. Gary, do you feel like you're making a bit of a stand in the game now? Yeah, we've got into the game. They've had a good start. Uh, but we're getting ourselves slowly back into it. So uh, it's quite exciting. Getting the likes of Scott Donnelly and Joel Grant on the ball is important, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. You know, they've got qualities on, uh, when we've got the ball, you know. It's plain to see today. Scott, he's had a couple of efforts at goal. And Joel, we know how good Joel is when he's got the ball at his feet. Have you looked a bit shaky at the back? Yeah, I think we have, but, uh, you know, teams come here and put us under pressure and, uh, you know, not always going to have it our own way, and these are a very good side, so we expect that during the course of a game. Thanks, Gary. Thank Honest assessment from the older shot manager. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly right, and I think they're a little bit shaky at the moment. We're up against two strong forwards. If anything that comes into them at the moment in time, they're going to have to play ugly, the two centre-halves. Winfield fouled there by Rankin as he went through Rankin doesn't agree with the decision, and he'd do well to keep his opinions to himself. I don't know what he's doing, Michael Rankin. He must know it was a trip there, but it was a pulling of the shirt before. Is Burgess. Flag was up, didn't quite time it, Rankin. Now they're trying to hold a high line, and Rankin and Channel are just running offside. Have to be careful with it. Well, we mentioned Winfield being in the wars, and he had that earlier hard landing of his knee. He's not going to last, unfortunately, for the 20 year old. He's going to have to come off. His cup final is over. Warm applause from the older shot faithful. And his replacement is a former Rushton player, Rob Gear, in his first season here. Between 2004 and 2006, he played 74 times for Rushton and Diamonds. Scored a couple of goals in the process as well. He will come on at right back, and Dean Smith will push into centre half. Well, I think that was down more to precautionary more than anything, and I think we're looking at it now. To Lost a lot of height now, and Dean Smith going in there. It's going to be interesting what happens through the middle because I'm sure Gary will be looking to get the ball forward, put it on the top of Dean Smith now, and just get maybe Michael ranking up against him. I mean, just looking at maybe just something that's looked like there, but one of them ones Gary can't afford to lose. That man has been so important all season for him. I think he'll go on to become a good centre half in his time. No Day or Charles in the 16 for older shot this evening. As Gary Wadham was saying to us earlier, after this evening, they have another seven cup finals to go. And in relation to their remaining league fixtures, the next of which is here on Saturday against Salisbury. As the ice goes on Dave Winfield. And four of those remaining seven are away from here. Two against teams in the playoff positions and two against teams in the relegation zone as well for older shot. Gary already knows, he just played Drawson and Stafford and he's had two battles and he knows every game they play now is never going to be easy. Well, Chalmers can't believe that he's been penalised there with the challenge with Woodhouse. Well, Curtis Woodhouse never complained about it, it was just an old-fashioned challenge, nothing wrong about it at all, his stud was, studs were never up and that's a poor decision by the referee. Gary Waddock's telling the fourth official just that, down below us as well. Oh, I'd be, be even more frustrated if something happens from this Russian free kick. Shaw and Kelly are behind it. In from Tom Shaw. That's not a very good delivery. Way over the head of Michael Rankin. I've just seen Gary Hill just say a few words. Where the man maybe think he's not happy, but he knows all they've got to do is get balls in that area. Especially without Dave Winfield there, it's always going to cause a problem. Now they've got to defend even better than what they have done in previous games. They're going to have to try and really push high and get gear and get Straker up against their respective wide players and stop the crosses into the box because with Dean Smith and Ricky Newman, they haven't got great height. Any 
balls into their actual box. Hold a shot is always going to cause them a problem. Kirk Hudson, renewing acquaintances with Curtis Asano. Now Straker, trying to deliver it back to Hudson. I have to be quick to keep that in. He's quick, but not that quick. It was unlucky. Good thinking there by Anthony Straker just to wait a pass with just a little bit too much. Well, this is uh, Dave Winfield, who's just gone off, of course, and we're hearing from the bench that they suspect ligament damage, which isn't good news for all the shot fans. It certainly isn't, but they have got two set and a half, two good ones in Anthony Charles and Reese Day as well. So Barry's got, got players there who can come and do a great job for him as well. Any further news? We will, of course, bring that to you. Smith coming across there in front of Kelly. Well, we've had half an hour. It's a fascinating cup final at the moment. It is at the moment. It's two in and throwing in the game. I just the one thing that Russian have got their great strength now is going to be the height up front and the strength I have. It's going to cause a problem to the centre of that defence. Older shot off just somehow I've just got to get over the ball and keep doing what they normally do just to try and wear Rushton down. And that's where they win a lot of games and they keep keep trying to do what they're good at. In the end, it wears a lot of teams down. Grant beaten to it by Hope. Gia gets it back from Joel Grant. Here he is, Joel Grant, looking for John Grant. And they needed Asano to clear for Rushton. Good bit of play there between Gia and Grant, but the ball into John Grant, but it was a good thinking of Phil Gulliver that stopped the ball getting to him. Here's Gia, Paul Cross, easily cleared by Woodhouse. Smith, caught there by Chaloner. Stayed down as well, Dean Smith. Actually hit him. The Rushton player stopped. Here's Joel Grant who didn't. And away by Dean Howe. That's a throw in. Gary Hill thought perhaps it might have been a foul on Michael Rankin. And here comes Ricky Newman. He, come, he does come in from behind there, Ricky Newman. I think he's got a, maybe a good case there, Gary Hill. Here's Straker. Just opened up in front of him. Junior Mendes. Sanu, who does have great pace, came across once more. 21 year old. He's defended well so far this evening. Just ran away from Mendes, then cleared by Phil Gulliver. Chalmers looking for Hudson, cleared again by Asano. Now Rob Gear. The offside flag is up against Junior Mendes. Good idea by Rob Gear, but I just think the ball sh should have opened his body out and maybe come white to Joel Grant. That's what he wants. They need to do to really maybe get hold of the game is get the ball to Joel Grant's feet and just let him have a little test at Dean Howell, see if Dean Howell can handle him. Asano's done well against him, that's why he's come to the right to have a go at Dean Howell just to test him out at the moment. He hasn't had many opportunities. Rushton. Hold a shot rather free kick. Rushton offside. Hudson's touch to Junior Mendes. By Donnelly. Well, that's the man who's made the one real save of any quality so far to deny Chalmers. Good header by Smith. Forward by Woodhouse. Well, Dean Smith, I'm the last person to ever go at, go at anybody being a small centre half. Dean Howe, from the 
Gray's player in his first season at the club with the throw. Forward by Joel Grant. John Grant is on the chase here. Dale Roberts out of his penalty area to clear. Straker to Hudson. Plenty of red shirts forward. Good pace again from Hudson, but also from Asano. At the moment he's winning all these personal battles at the moment, Curtis Asano. I just think I'd like to see like to see Straker push him more, just to really test out Andy Burgess. Andy Burgess does enjoy tracking back. I just think they can get a two against one against Asano if they really work it on the shot. Donnelly's corner. Woodhouse with a header away. Mendes back in, and had to be put behind by Phil Gulliver. And they got caught a little bit unawares there, Chris Hope. Mendes has come the goal side of him. Evenly matched this half so far. Very, very even. Donnelly's corner. Away by Rankin. Picked up again by Hudson. Back in from Chalmers and away by Rankin once more. Pulled again by Smith. Now Chalmers. Junior Mendes is the willing runner. Has he won another corner? Yes, he has. Good ball there by Lewis Chalmers, just in the behind Dean Howe. Full set the turn round. Mendes is touch, slightly let him down, but he done his job, he's earned the corner. So Donnelly once more, super block, and it came back in from Hudson, cleared by Kelly. Newman, Junior Mendes chasing Hudson too, and it's another older shot corner. Defended well away, even in Asano there, just read the danger, anticipate what's going to happen next. Got his body across there and cleared his lines, but just see the Hudson, lovely little ball there. And it's all about Sarno's pace and strength. Otherwise, Dale Roberts could have been tested again. Here it comes again from Donnelly. Free header from Rob Gear, the former Rushton player, whose last goal was for Rushton way back in February 2005. Headed that one over the crossbar. It's always going to be a difficult one, just slightly above him, done well to reach it. But up against a side like Rushton, so big and strong. They can't be too happy that a player of his size can actually get to the ball and jump on his own as well. Now, ranking from Burgess. Straker's got to get back here. Jaime's not troubled in the end by Michael Rankin. I mean, lovely little ball by Burgess, but it was always going a little bit wide. Rankin just didn't have the pace to get to it quick to maybe hit it more central. He was that wide, and that, as a defender, you, you're going to let anybody shoot. You want him in that position. Has to be a hell of a strike from there to go and pull it by, pull it past Jaimez. His manager not too impressed, but Michael Rankin, the reason why they're in the final, it was his goal that beat Halifax in the semi-final. Former Scunthorpe player, not a good kick by Jaimez, got away with it because it went straight to his captain Ricky Newman. Smith's header away, Woodhouse, now Kelly, Ooh, Mike Donnelly. What we've just seen now, we've seen Andy Burgess come more towards us on his left-hand side, and I just wonder now, if they just think about it, they can maybe just get a little bit of joy, I said before with Anthony Strake, who can definitely get out, out on that left-hand side of his great pace and, and his ability to get forwards. That could be a good outlet for older shot. Joel Grant. John Grant is offside. Scored in the last three games against Russia, and each of them, John Grant hasn't really had too many chances in this first half so far. It's down to good defender moment. That was a lovely bit of play. John Grant has just gone far too early. I'd love to have seen Joel Grant maybe run a little bit more, but he decided to play the early pass in the end. His namesake is offside.
two one two hold a shot back in November in the league here. John Grant, Ben Harding, the goal scorers that particular day. Samin Jackson for Rushton, who of course since departed for the football league. Every time we've seen the ball, just trying to get him behind the two centre halves. They have struggled. Maybe just playing a little bit too much in front, older shot. That's what they want at the moment, Rush, and they want the ball in front of them. Every time we've seen them turn around, they've always had problems. Challoner. What by Chalmers, but he has it back again. Challoner. Only ranking to aim for. Jaimez came out of his area eventually. Maybe just come a little bit too late. He's to see him hesitate a bit, it allowed his ranking to get closer to him. Maybe he got too early, he might have been out, clear his lines further down the pitch. Three clean sheets and five appearances this season, all in the cup competitions for Aldershot. And his clean sheet intact so far as we approach half time in the Satanta Shield final. We've seen Dave Winfield go off and we've seen Aldershot defending a, a lot better than they're actually doing when he's on. To see him be winning more headers. To seem more decisive in their defending as well, not waiting for the ball to bounce, just attacking the, attacking the ball every time he's there in front of them. Long throw from Rankin, away by Smith and Kelly going in. We've seen Dean Smith win another clean header against Rankin. Dave Winfield is having a battle, and I just think Dean Smith, what he's doing is he's not he's not having a test of strength at all with Michael Rankin. He's just dropping off, and Michael Rankin is more concerned about where he is rather than trying to win the ball in the air. Cleared by Gulliver for Rushton, and by Smith for Aldershot. Good strength from John Grant. Here's Joel Grant. Mendes just getting goal side. Two in the penalty area. Joel Grant will try and find them. Hudson. Chalmers will keep it in on that far side for Aldershot. Back in first time. Hudson. Straight at Roberts. Great idea that was by Kirk Hudson as well. Great first touch, just set it up. The only thing that was just lacking was just the power at the end. But what a great bit of skill this was. Good thinking. Look, just there. That bit there was just the power was missing. If it was the power on it, I think it was gonna definitely gonna be in the back of the net. Here he is again. Junior Mendes. To Joel Grant. Donnelly on ahead of him. Now John Grant. Chalmers. No chances taken by Curtis Asano. Another older shot corner. No, that's, good. that's called good defend. He has not put a foot wrong so far this evening, Curtis Asano. Everything's been asked of him. He's done his job. But again, we've just seen how this attack, attack started. It was a ball in just behind Chris Hope. And it's all about Mendes. Mendes getting goal side of him. He's not enjoying himself at the moment. Chris Hope having to keep turning around and running back towards his own goal. Here comes the corner. Goalkeeper is out pretty comfortably for this one, though. Burgess to Chaloner. Burgess wants it back. It's gone over him though. John Grant's header and he goes to Curtis Woodhouse. Now Kelly taking on gear. Still Kelly. Caught late there by Joel Grant. Well, that is so unlike Joel Grant. You don't often see him make tackles and there's nothing malicious about it at all in the sense of he never meant it. The referee's like, there's, there's no intent at all, he's just gone in for it and sometimes he's just better dribbling and trying to go past players rather than trying to help his teammates out of the back. First older shot player in the book this evening. Joins John Chaloner of Rushton and Diamonds and it gives Rushton a free kick in the last 30 seconds of normal time in this first half. Can he 
Chelsea's side produce anything from this. Both the central defenders are forward. Deep one. And at the back post. There's the captain, Chris Hope, but it was a tight angle. And as you can see, there are two minutes of time to add on at the end of this first half. See, to see Gary Hill getting a bit animated. It's twice have been in good areas for delivery. Up against, up against the defence, not a lot of height, and the quality's been really poor. It's a great strength to the balls in the air and get balls into the older shot box. They're not actually doing that at the moment in time. Straker. Cleared by Hope. And then Newman goes back to Jaimez. Donovan. He's put under pressure there by Curtis Woodhouse. So he has done. I mean, they've gone a little bit quiet in midfield. Scott Donnelly. They haven't really clicked in the centre of midfield at the moment. It's been about getting the wide players on the ball. On the ball more. It's about Hudson and about Joel Grant. Really, that's that's where it's gone. That's been a little bit of strength. But other than that, really, they haven't got going as we normally see all the shot. And we have to say that's all about the good work what Russian have done to stop those two threats. Miss kick by Donnelly. Picked up by Burgess. That's a good ball. It's Challoner all on his own at the moment. Rankin wants it square. It's Rankin. Denied with almost the last kick of the first half. Talking about Gira there. Rod Gira done absolutely fantastic. Come across from his right back position and just got himself in and around Rankin. Dean Howe. His striker. This will be the last action of the first half now. It won't be a very good last action. It's all square at the break in the Satanta Shield final. Gary Hill's side have more than matched. Aldershot, the league leaders, on their own patch. But neither have been able to convert the chance that they created. Aldershot, of course, were the favourites. And they have produced one save. Rushton, though, will feel that they had chances that they didn't convert as well. And the end result of all that is there are no goals and it's all square at the break in the final. Aldershot nil, Rushton nil. Here in the Satanta Shield final, it is nil-nil, goalless between the league leaders Aldershot and Rushton and Diamonds. These are the scenes inside the Aldershot dressing room. Gary Wardock ushering some instructions. Perhaps he haven't troubled the Rushton goalkeeper as much as he would have liked. We'll see what happens in the second half. Nil-nil here at the Recreation Ground. And incidentally as well, game going on, a very important one in the Blue Square Premier tonight uh, at St James Park. It is Exeter nil, Droylsden, the bottom side, without eight first-team players, nil. As it stands, Exeter would stay in sixth. If they can win that game, they will go above Cambridge into fifth in the playoff positions on goal difference, still with a game in hand. Nil-nil here then. Is that about right? I think it's about... They're all square, Steve. That's, that is right for me. The game's been so even. Normally we're talking about older shot and a dominating game. They haven't been allowed to dominate by Rushton this evening. They've had chances, older shot, but perhaps not as many clear-cut ones as we're used to seeing them create. Oh, that's right. I mean, it's all about Rushton. They are stopping, stopping the ball going wide, and when it goes wide to players, they're dealing with it at the moment. We've just seen the, you know, we've just seen a great shot there by Lewis Chalmers, just coming on late, sitting deep from the corner. But what a good save by Del Roberts. He's just almost going past the ball, and he sticks his left left arm back just to pull it, out, push it over the bar, I should say. It's a really good save and. To be honest, that's the only real save he's had to make, which obviously will dis disappoint Gary. Is that credit to Rushton, though, Pass? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, Steve. They've done brilliant. And we've seen Scott Donnelly just have a shot there as well. Lovely little bit of interchange, interchange here. Mendes involved, and it comes back, comes back to um, Scott Donnelly. And it, he knew what he was doing. He was trying to find that keeper's left-hand corner, and he just fractionally missed it. And again, this is Kirk H Hudson. And that was just something out of the bag there. He just, he just off the cuff, I should say, that one there. It's a good first touch. He knew exactly what he wanted to do next. We just didn't get the power. 
They're the older shot chances then. Let's take a look at the Rushton ones because when we see that, particularly the one from Burgess, they'll feel perhaps they should have scored. Oh, they, sh they should have scored as far as I'm concerned. It was Dave Winfield who's just got a little bit lax there, played the ball cross, maybe a little bit too tight, but the quality of the ball from the free kick was poor and it was a good ball in as well. It comes to Burgess out wide and you can't allow him any time in the ball to deliver and you see what a wonderful ball and John Chandler normally scores from them, Steve, to be honest. He, he's, he comes in late, drifts in late, gets across the front there of Dave Winford and made the initial mistake. The way this game is going as well, they could be crucial moments, couldn't they? They could do at the moment. We're sitting here and we just don't know where, which way this game's going to go. And to be honest, there hasn't been too many times I've actually said that when I've come here to hold a shot. You normally got a good idea which way the game's going to go this evening, this evening match. This was ranking with a tight angle, but he didn't even make the goalkeeper work there, did he? And no. Much to the annoyance of his manager. Yeah, he never looked like he was going to score that one. He never got to the ball quick enough and he actually got on the ball, didn't look comfortable. And we see, we've seen this one just almost on top of half-time here. Chandler just coming, lovely little ball cut back. Rankin couldn't get there. Rob Gear got across in the end, but Rankin again was just a fraction of a second late to get on the ball. Aldershot, of course, have had to make a change. That's because young central defender Dave Winfield uh, had to go off. Well, he was in the wars from... The first minute, really, tonight, it was. That one it? there was just one of those ones you jump and you land awkwardly. And you and I, I just saw that one, I made a little noise down the microphone I, because I just saw the way his knee just wobbled a bit and it just shifted out a bit. And obviously, he never really recovered from that one, Steve. And then, obviously, the intimate as well when he took the elbow from John Chandler and you just thought yourself it wasn't going to be his night. Mm. Oh, well, we've seen Gary Waddock, uh, what he's saying inside the Aldershot dressing room. His assistant, Martin Cool has now taken over. Remember, this is the chance for Aldershot or the first step of a league and cup double. It's finally poised at nil-nil here against Rushton and Diamonds. You will find out how they do. We must have a winner. The second half is coming live next. Half time of the Satanta Shield final here at the Recreation Ground. It's Aldershot nil, Russian and Diamonds nil. I'm joined by the Russian manager, Gary Hill. Gary, you started well. Did you feel that they began to impose themselves a little as the half went on? Yeah, very much so. You know, I thought that first 15 minutes we were very positive, created a few uh, good corners uh, in respect of good football, had one or two very good chances. Then they slowly got back in the game, and then for 20 minutes there was a dominant spell in respect of, you know, they break with a lot of. Uh, Mobility. There's a lot of energy in their side. They play on your shoulders. Very good side. There's no doubt about that. And you know, uh, we've got to be concentrating totally. But I thought we'd come back into it again just before half time. And you know, we're very pleased at half time to be nil nil. And uh, we just got to keep making sure now. First 15 minutes of the second half an important time for us. I feel that you know it will depend a lot there now. We can come through that first 15 minutes. Is Michael Rankin making a big enough impact for you? Yeah, I think he is. I think the boy Winfield's gone off and uh, I think he beat him up a little bit. I think he, uh, he's done quite well, Michael Rankin. I'm happy with him. I'm happy with the team all the way around, you know. And uh, like I say, we've just got to keep going. And I'm only really concerned about, you know, um, free kicks, throw-ins, that they do things very, very quick. We must not, you know, switch off at all. OK, Gary, thank you. We'll talk in the second half. Thank, thank you. you. Well, Rushton in a cup final tonight and they'll have a couple of cup finals in the league next season. Bring on the Kettering. Here's the chant from the Rushton fans, their local rivals, just down the A14, of course, currently well ahead in the Blue Square North. Mark Cooper has done a terrific job there. So they're certainly hoping that in the Blue Square Premier next season, Kettering and Rushton will be a local derby. But they're also hoping to see their side lift a trophy tonight. And they're very much in this, and it's finally poised. Nil-nil in the Satanta Shield final. Remember, we must have a winner. A couple of fans around me at half-time asking that if there was a replay. The answer was no. I told them not to leave early. They should know that from the semi-final when, of course, Aldershot went to the extra time and penalties. We'll see what unfolds in this second half here at the Recreation Ground, and it is Aldershot in all red to get us underway. Early ball from Gear. Mendes. Goalkeeper was quickly off his line. Needed to be as well, Dale Roberts. Positive start by all the shot, and he had to be on his toes early on, Dale Roberts. Couldn't afford to be on his heels, otherwise Kirk Hudson definitely would have got on the end of that. Kirk Hudson. There was a score in that shootout in the semi-final. Chalmers. And forward by Straker. This is now Dean Howell, 26-year-old. 
Crossfield ball, picking out Andy Burgess. He's possessed by Straker. Question is who can keep their nerve in front of goal and convert a chance, which could, the way this game is going, be the key to winning the final. I think more than anything, I think it's who's going to create a real open opportunity in this game. Both both defences are not really giving anything open. They're at, both sides are having to work hard to make openings. Here's Joel Grant. He can make openings. Excellent effort, which was blocked by Asano. Now Donnelly, you know he's always going to go for goal, and Asano in the way again. Better start this from Oldershot, start this half a lot better than what they did the first half. I think that half-time chat has said it all, get the ball to that man's feet there, Joel Grant. Trying to play a little bit more central now, he might just get a little bit more joy central than what he has done wide so far. Donnelly. Now Hudson. Roll it into Junior Mendes. Chalmers with the header, John Grant lurking on the shoulder of the defender and then cleared by Burgess for Rushton. I must say, Dean Smith has looked really comfortable in that role at centre-half. Fitting him really well. Haven't seen a lot of ranking since he's been there. Ranking find it very, very difficult to cope with him. He's got more defending to do now, the forward. Michael Rankin trotting back. Because Aldershot have a free kick. Scott Donnelly is going to deliver it. Headed away by Chris Hope, the Rushton captain. And then the offside flag is up. Mendes coming back from an offside position. And he's had success as a manager. Remember, promoted into the conference with both Weymouth and Dagenham. But this would be his first national trophy and Rushton and Diamond's first national trophy as well as we heard from him just before the start of the second half more than happy to still be in this against the best team in the league the table doesn't lie that definitely doesn't lie everyone knows how good they are that's why at the moment they've had a few tough games everyone wants to beat them side flag is up must have been a tight one. I don't think it's Dean Howe. I think they've they flagged against John Chandler, who had gone early. We've just seen now on the far touch line. Dean Howe's making a run from deep. But obviously, the ball's gone near to John Chandler. That is why they're, they're saying it's offside. I find that very, very strange. We see that week in, week out in the Premier League, and that normally would have just carried on. Active, non-active, active. Clear as mud. Exactly right. Well, there's been a goal to tell you about at St James Park, and it's not for Exeter. It's the bottom club, Troylston, who are on such a terrific run at the bottom. They're not going down without a fight. Robbie Tolbert has scored a goal, and that is very important, of course, to the top six of the Blue Square Premier. That is Exeter's game in hand. Hoping to go into fifth position with a win tonight, trailing at home to the bottom club, Troylston. I wish I could say that surprised me, Steve, but the way draws and have gone of late, they're just winning games or really pushing teams to the limit. They, they've, well, they've pushed Grays, they've just just pushed Drawn up all the shot as well. Yes, they've done that, and it, all the shot had to fight for that one. Gary said that was a battle. Offside flag is up again. Continues the playoff wobble as well, doesn't it? We've seen recently. It's Monday night, Burton lose, we've seen Stevenage lose, we saw Exeter lose at York, Cambridge lose at Ebbsfleet, Torquay draw on Saturday, nobody wants to take on that mantle. So, right, it's getting a bit like the Championship at the moment, there's nobody in the actual in the Football League Championship who really wants to go get to the top of it and try and stay there. And in terms of the playoffs, we've got a massive game for you on Saturday. Exeter after tonight's game have to pick themselves up either way. 
and go to Stevenage, who've been beaten just twice at home this season, who won it against York at home this season, five, uh, this, this week rather, five o'clock on Saturday, Satanta Sports 1, Stevenage against Exeter in a game that really could be pivotal as to who gets in those playoffs at the end of April. Especially if that scoreline stays the same as it is at, at the moment in time, that will be a really big game. Both sides are going to be desperate for three points. Both sides desperate to win the Satanta Shield here. Foul on Jaimez by Rankin. Well, I think he had a right to go with it. It can only be if he actually led with his foot in towards the goalkeeper, but he's allowed the ball to bounce and he comes to it. Oh, well, I, I think he had every right to go for that ball. His arms weren't up, his foot, foot weren't out. I think the referee's been very, very soft. Jaimez got, got away very light on that one. Header back from his captain wasn't too good either. Another boy born in Bellows way. Larry's okay. Aldershot as a team, incidentally. They've only kept one clean sheet in their last 13 games in all competitions. That was their 1-0 win at Crawley in the league. So they have suddenly began to leak goals. But they still score them. 107 in all competitions this season to be precise none so far this evening here's Burgess to Asano excellent play from Asano again Woodhouse with a low ball in offside flag is up and John Chandler will be delighted about that because that was another excellent opportunity that he didn't get on target well, As well, Asano not only can defend, he can break from defence. And it was a lovely ball out to Curtis Woodhouse. Good ball, good early ball in by Curtis Woodhouse. Chandler's just gone fraction too early. Just got to be aware, I think. Older shot, I have to be really aware of just the counter attacks. They're a side that lead themselves quite open. Here's Kirk Hudson. Donnelly, saved by the legs of Roberts, good opportunity for Scott Donnelly. It was a fantastic opportunity, it was served on the play for him by Kirk Hudson, it's all about Dale Roberts again. Straker, and Newman got back in ahead of Rankin. It's a second good save of the night, Dale Roberts on loan from Nottingham Forest. So important, it's the first time they've really opened up, up this defence. It's set up lovely as well there for Scott Donnelly. Great run, great save with the left foot coming across his body as well. Couldn't do any more than what he'd done, Scott Donnelly. But he'd done a lot more, Dale Roberts, to keep out the net. Mendes couldn't bring that under control. Cleared by Asano. Ben Harding is about to enter the action. And it's going to come on for Lewis Chalmers, the man who had that excellent effort in the first half. Rushton are also making a change, incidentally, here. Marcus Kelly is coming off to be replaced by Lee Tomlin. former Leicester Academy player is on for Kelly and here comes Ben Harding for Lewis Chalmers former Altingham player receives a great round of applause Harry Waddock's first signing and Rushton know all about Ben Harding because he scored in the 2-1 win here earlier in the season in the league with John Grant, 23 year old, former MK Dons player, saw his former club pick up a trophy recently, of course. Now trying to do it tonight with Aldershot. Here he is to Straker. Joel Grant up against Asano. Still Joel Grant. Might fancy the shot here. It'll come to Junior Mendes. 
is! Right across the face of goal. The first time we've really seen Joel Grant go at Asano. And he takes him on the inside this time. Normally can't beat him for pace on the outside. Comes across the front. Lovely little reverse ball to Mendes. And he strikes it where he should do across the keeper. But it goes just slightly wider the far post. But that was better from Joel Grant. More direct. But he's unlucky Mendes in the end. Well, let's find out from all the shots. Number one, Nicky Bull, rested again tonight, is with Rebecca. Thanks, Steve. Nicky, we've just seen Joel Grant there. Is he key for you guys tonight? Yeah, definitely. I think um, any any uh, attacking players in the game tonight could be the difference. I think both sides are, are blessed with good attacking options. I uh, can see it being a long night for everyone. Uh, I think another penalty shootout is going to be on the cards tonight. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> um, what about Ben Harding? Just put him, you just thrown him on as a substitute. He's exactly the type of player you need in this situation, isn't he? Right. Yeah, I think the idea before the game was obviously... It's Rankin, he's hit the post. I think obviously uh, the idea before the game was to give Ben Hardy and Louis Chalmers equal amount of time. And I, I should imagine uh, in the next 10-15, uh, give John Grant a brief as well. Obviously we've got a big game in uh, two days' time against Salisbury in the league. So I think the gaffer's going to try and keep it fresh. Thanks, Nicky. No well, while Nicky was talking there, Michael Rankin with the closest we've come to a goal all evening. That was a three against one situation, and he actually made the wrong decision there. There's two disgruntled players to his right. Should have just controlled it one pass at the other. In the end, he gets his shot off, but I'm sure they could have really done better with that one then. What he ended up with, really, Smith takes, I think, a whack in the face of a John Chandler, goes down, and there was asking for the ball to be given out, to be kicked out. You don't have to do it. It's decisions with the referee, and the referee decided to play on. Such a great area. The older shot bench were furious that they did play on. Fourth official currently talking to Gary Waddock. Normally. Well, that's a good point because we believe he's making the point that it was a head injury. And the referees are told when it is a head injury to stop play. Well, that's another one you have to work out. How do you work out if it's serious or not? In the end, it was just a slap around the side of his face. Nothing serious at all. Smith is still waiting to come back on, he has now. And there he is. And he's got more defending to do, because Rankin, the man who just hit the post, is going to throw this long. Second clearance was by Donnelly. Hope for Rushton. And Shaw. And Burgess couldn't keep it in on the far side. Well, we've had almost an hour. Nicky Ball thinks we're set for penalties. What do you reckon? I don't think we should ever interview him again. What a statement that is to make. Talk about trying not to be positive. I know, I thought you were the most negative person I've ever met, but perhaps Nicky Bull's just gone one stop further there. Stay with us, we must have a winner tonight. The first Satanta Shield final. Nothing to choose between these two at the moment. Newman's clearance. Feels for handball by Chandler. Referee said play on. Here's Kirk Hudson. Junior Mendes, who had that earlier opportunity to Joel Grant. And that man, Curtis Asano, has been in the way of most things this evening for Rushton and Diamonds. Oh, he's been the best defender in the park so far this evening. Just so patient, buys his time. Good play by Straker. Away from the challenge of Short. Joel Grant. Then fouled by Short. I just don't think Tomlin could actually do anything about it, to be honest, really. I don't know if he's left a leg out there. Has Joel Grant come across him yet? Definitely intentional, that was. Got away with it, I think. The referee never saw it that way. He's a lucky boy.
set piece opportunity then for Aldershot. Deep one from Donnelly, I know honesty. It's not a very good one from Scott Donnelly. It must be saying at the end of the field, we'll just keep seeing every that's the third time we've seen the ball in that area, and that's the third time it's been overhit. Newman's had it. Curtis would have. Good pace again by Anthony Straker. In the head of Lee Tomlin. Another long throw then from Michael Rankin. This is just one of their strengths at the moment, trying to win the balls in, in that box, using their strength and height. Way by Straker. Back in from Woodhouse. Rushton have lost only six of their last 27 games in all competitions. No problem has been drawing too many this season. Drawing nil nil at the moment in this final. Woodhouse with the corner. Gulliver trying to get the head of Goldwoods. Donnelly to Kirk Hudson. Beautifully away from Woodhouse. Burgess back with Joel Grant. And then that's a free kick from Rushton. Not too often you see Andy Burgess back defending. Done a good job job in the end helping out Asano defending. They haven't really got him the game as much as they'd like Andy Burgess. It's the one player I believe who can maybe just pull something out of the bag and maybe take Rushton on to go out and win this go on and win this cup final. Tomlin's head. Chaloner's flick. Defending again by Smith in ahead of Rankin. He's done great since he's gone in there at centre half. He's won most of his heading duels and he's winning a battle on the floor as well. Here comes Rankin again with that long throw. Away by Newman. Back in from Woodhouse. Newman wants more. Well, there's been very little between these two sides all evening. Henry Waddock's side have won 19 of their last 25 games on this ground. They've lost just three. Two of those three. We're in their first three home games of the season. Only Forest Green since September have come to this ground and won. It's about the way Forest Green play as well. One of the few sides who play good football. Away by Smith to Woodhouse. And that will be the goalkeeper's Jaimez. Throw to Hudson. Show too much of it to Dean Howell. Wonderful throw by Jaimez to get them going. Trying to really try to pick up their tempo at the moment over the shot. Here's Hudson. Off Howell again. Picked up by Rob Gear. Harding to Donnelly. Away from Shaw. An older shot throw on the far side. Most than three clean sheets in four games in this competition before the final. And still with their clean sheet intact tonight. Thanks to their goalkeeper Dale Roberts, who's made two very good saves. Older shot have a corner.
this one if it's worth their while on the shot. Maybe trying to go sh short, just trying to drag a few of the defenders out of the box. Haven't got great height. Not going to win too many duels in that box. Longley's corner. That down was from Harding. Field aimed towards Tomlin, who is all alone. Dormas from Smith. Forward by Straker. by Newman. Newman. The longer this game goes, of course, Sets of players won't want to be the ones that makes a mistake. Could cost them the cup final. Tomlin, he stayed on his feet, he got round Newman. Rankin is waiting. That was cut back only into the path of Kirk Hudson. Won back by Rushton now though. Tomlin once more. The end of that, it's another Rushton corner. That's Yule stem from Asano winning the battle again, just outstrength Joel Grant in just to keep the ball rolling off. It looks like he's just he might have cramp as well just after it, trying to stretch off his fight at the moment. Woodhouse to take the corner for Rushton. Look at the near post from the captain, Hope, and taken by Jaimes. Rob Gear. Chaloner. Now this time he's onside ranking, but Jaimes was quickly alerted to the situation. Joel Grant against Asano. Still can't get past him. He's trying now. This time Tom Shaw was in the way. Yeah, definitely, I mean, they're doubling up, they're trebling up from Joel Grant. He's just starting to get a little bit hot at the moment. Looks like he's going to need a piece of magic from somebody like that at the moment. John Grant. Tomlin, and a few words from the referee. Yeah, that all stemmed from John Grant went to pick the ball up and Tomlin just kicked it away from him. He's a fiery character, Lee Tomlin. Joel Grant, Harding, Straker. Again, the quality not there when it came to the final ball. Was that was good interchange of passing again? They just need a little bit more quality there from Anthony Striker in the end. <laughs> Gears head. Harding challenging with Woodhouse. Shaw has been penalised. Free kick to Aldershot. So there's a little bit more height and strength out on the park. Ben Harding and that desire to want to get in the box as well for Aldershot. Joel Grant looking to get the cross in. John Grant it was who was trying to profit at the near post. Chris Hope done really well defending there. He was in, he was in that one, John Grant and Chris Hope hadn't come across the front of him. I think Asano's struggling at the moment, seems to be carrying his left leg at the moment. Good ball from Donnelly to Hudson, outside of his right foot. And Julian Mendes puts it in for Aldershot. His fourth goal in nine games. And it's the first in this cup final.
and it's Gary Waddock's side who break the deadlock. Well, we were all sitting here watching it, not knowing which way this game was going to swing, but it was all about Asano. I think he's struggling with injury, and they managed to get in an area which he can't cover that well now. It was Kirk Hudson, you're not going to catch him when he gets rolling. Intelligent ball across the box, and he comes in, Mendes. Junior Mendes comes in strong and brave, and he puts in the back of the net. And he worked so hard and so tirelessly, Mendes, he definitely deserves that goal this evening. Seen it again, man. Great, great pace that was by Kirk Hudson. But it's the intelligence of his ball across the fit, across the park as well. Just there, just tempting, just, just come and get me. The ball says, Mendes goes and gets it and puts his side one nil up. The man who arrived in February, the 31-year-old, has finally broken a deadlock this evening. Much the delight of a noisy home faithful. There's still 18 minutes of this cup final to go. Go, go, go. Rushton looking for an immediate response. Long from Rankin. There was a touch in there. Chaloner missed it. And the level. Andy Burgess has leveled things for Rushton. All the shot left for just one minute. And Andy Burgess has made it 1 1. Well, I talked about Andy Burgess, about one of those players who just might be able to pull something out of the hat. And he's gone and done that. It's the first time a long throw's really worked. Worked for him this evening, rushed him. And it's just a slip up by Git in the, in the defence in the end. Get rolled through the defender's leg. Burgess just sitting behind him. Just goes the opposite side of Gira. Can't do anything about it. It's a deflection that takes it away from him. Off a channel Not a chance for Jaimez in goal. Gary Hills, he's very happy, he's come back into it straight away. That's the way to respond after going 1 0 down. Burgess with his fourth of the season. Back to all square. Junior Mendes with the touch. John Grant trying to get on the end of it. by Straker. Now oh, you want to come Martin Cool in deep discussion there. Say them at your most vulnerable when you've just scored. Of course, and that was proven there for all the shot. It certainly was. They just fell asleep. They've done so well defending those long throws from Rankin. Just fell asleep. Takes a deflection off channel and that allows it to get across get across gear. And in comes Andy Burgess to bring themselves back into the game. Forward by Gulliver, away by Harding. Asano. Woodhouse. Little touch to the goal scorer, Andy Burgess, but he lost out there to Donnelly. He then gave it straight back to Woodhouse. Chaloner, very nearly got there as well, John Chaloner. A bit of confusion now bet between Smith and Jaimez. Chaloner won that in the air to rank it. Lee Tomlin up against Anthony Straker. Chaloner's effort always curling across the face of goal. Lacking power as well. Just wondering now if this Rushton, if they're just going to be the stronger side, stronger side at the finish. Just seeing Chandler's shot, try to go in that corner, just lacking pace in the end to trouble Jaimez. Well, an immediate equaliser for Rushton. Let's see how their manager feels about it with Rebecca. Gary, from despair to hope in less than a minute there. Yes, you know, uh, it was important for us to uh, equalise quickly. You know, they've gone one nil up and uh, we've replied well, showed a bit of character and we've got, uh, we've got a ring in now, so it's, uh, could go either way, could go either way. Thanks, Gary. Harding. 
Joel Grant to Mendes. Now Harding. Back to Dean Smith. And go all the way through to Dale Roberts. We're talking of equalisers. There's been one in the Blue Square Premier at St James Park. Exeter level, courtesy of a Richard Logan penalty against the bottom club, Droylston. That would not be enough to put them in the top five, incidentally. Only a win this evening. Are we going to have a winner in the 90 here? Just worrying about fatigue in the older shot side. They've played a lot of football recently. Just wondering if it's going to catch up on a few of the young players. Mental fatigue more than anything. That's a good ball by Mendes. Kirk Hudson, four in the penalty area, taking on Howe. But Howe stuck to his task, going to Aldershot. Yeah, that second touch of Kirk Hudson just allowed Dean Howe to get across and get in that all-important tackle. It's Aldershot's 53rd game of the season, their 12th cup game. They've lost only two of their previous 11 cup matches. And they got to the semi-finals of the trophy as well, for losing over two legs to Ebsley. It has been a long old season in all competitions. Gary Waddock quickly pointing out seven more cup finals to go in the league after tonight. Salisbury, Ebsfleet, Burton, Exeter away. You'll see that game live on Satanta Sport, incidentally. Halifax away, Weymouth at home, and then tonight's opponents, Rushton away on the last day of the season. I'm just wondering what the linesman's is given here. Gary's him asking him the question, it's a throw, and asking, is he offside, or was it a foul? <laughs> it wasn't a foul, and it seems strange that maybe the assistant referee's given it for offside on the throw-in. Flick from Rankin. Finally foul. Just push their midfield slightly further up the park now, Rushton. Really trying to get tight to Donnelly and Harding higher up the park. Joel Grant. Good work from Tomlin. That's one of the reasons why Gary's brought him on, just to track back, just to help out Asano. John Grant. Cleared by Chris Hope, the captain. Another good leap by Smith for Aldershot. Mendes, their goal scorer. And went for goal again, Junior Mendes. At least he was positive. Never really on never really balanced the strike that with his weaker foot, but in the end he's come to life a little bit more. But they're having to drop really deep now to pick up the ball because they're seeing Rushton's back four dropping deep, not allowing the ball to go in behind them because they're scared of the pace of Hudson and Grant. Gears header for all the shot. Miss kick by Smith. Burgess, the Rushton equaliser. Out to Howell. Still going here, Howell. Terrific turn of place. Rankin with a touch. Burgess again. They were queuing up there for a moment for Rushton. Tomlin. No way round Joel Grant. Now he's done well, Joel Grant, just to come back with Tomlin. Thought he was going to open up there for Rushton. Just when Burgess got in there, just overhit his pass. Just finishing slightly stronger at the moment, Rushton. Putting edgy on the touchline as well for the two managers. Michael Rankin with a long throw once more. Touch there from Gulliver, went across the penalty area. Calmly cleared by Gear in the end. Is there a break on here with Hudson? Donnelly on ahead of him. Switches play instead to Mendes. Joel Grant back to Mendes. Promising for all the shot. 
didn't have to play that pass Mendes could have kept possession tried a difficult pass to just kept possession on the side of the pitch he was forward by gear and there's being fouled there free kick to hold the shot wasn't good play, intelligent play by the captain Chris Hope there. Got far too close, and he knew that Mendes would have turned him if he'd, if he'd let go of his shirt. Got no complaints about getting the free kick against him. Here's Mendes, lost his footing. Picked up by Woodhouse for Rushton. Newman. This is John Grant. And then the effort came in from Mendes, which was wide. Yeah, it was all teed up for him, but he just couldn't hit the target with it. Clean strike, just not on target. You see, again, they're, just, again, they're trying to intricate play, and, and it's just set up. Here he comes back to him. Just hit the target for us. He doesn't do it. Goes to the near post when he should be looking to hit it, at least across the goalkeeper. Osana. It's an older shot throw as time ticks on. A little over seven minutes of normal time, plus stoppage remaining. Was hoping that Nicky Ball's not proved right. It's another older shot throw. Straker will take it. Hardy. Still Hudson, cleared by Hope. Yeah, the opportunity there, it was a good run by Rob Gear and it took away Andy Burgess and allowed, allowed Hudson time to turn and deliver a, what he wanted to do as a quality ball into the box, he didn't manage to do it. Almost like just looking for some options here. Hudson gave Gear one in the end. Out by Hope. This is the time where, when you're a defender, you don't want to make any mistakes that could prove to be very costly. Twat. Hold the shot, have a corner. Again, it's Burgess coming back to help and couldn't just finish it off. Done well to come back. Couldn't, just couldn't manage to keep the ball in, in play. Couldn't stop the corner. Harding attacking it, Newman trying to get on the end of it as well. And it came out to Anthony Straker on his right foot, as it was in the semi-final, but unfortunately that one ends up as a rushed and throw-in. Yeah, I mean, he's better than that, Anthony Straker. He's smiling about it, all we had to do was just play that wide again, keep possession. <laughs> More smiles down there. He won't want another 30 minutes with Salisbury looming here on Saturday. No, he, def he definitely doesn't doesn't want that. He said that to me before the game. The last thing he wanted was an was extra time. Tomlin wins that back for Rushton, and then goes round Straker, and then rolls it into Rankin. He just couldn't quite take the ball with him. Ball just needed to be a little bit further in front of him. I don't think he was set to take the ball as well. Tomlin done so well to work back and offer that opportunity to him. Sure. Free kick quickly taken by Harding. John Grant. Mendes challenged by Howell. Now Chaloner.
Donnelly. Here is Junior Mendes. He didn't reach him though. Oh, again, you expect someone. He's got a little bit of quality like Scott Donnelly's got. Just the weight of pass. Everything was perfect with it. It's just the weight of pass was just there for Mendes to come in and get the strike. Don't want to take away the work that Dean Howell done as well. Done really well to get back to it. I just wonder if the weight of pass had been better. Could Mendes have got on the end of it? Well, Rushton are going to make another switch. And that is uh, young midfielder Andy Gooding. He's on loan at Burton earlier in the season. And he's going to come on for the final three minutes and possibly the extra 30. Here's Donnelly. Away by Asano. Straker. Still going on to his left foot. Shot was blocked by Gulliver. Seen a lot of tired legs out there in his older shot side. A lot of them are just making runs, they just can't get back anymore. It's the 50th game of Rushton season, 53rd of all the shots. Well, looks a sweet bit, bit of inspiration in the next couple of minutes. And we could be heading for another 30 minutes to decide the winners of the Satanta Shield. Rushton will use this opportunity to make the change. Straight swap in midfield, Tom Shaw off. The loving of Forest trainee comes off, and the 19-year-old who arrived in January from Coventry, and as I said, spent the first part of the season on loan at Burton Albion. Andy Gooding comes on, his 12th appearance, and has scored in the Satanta Shield in round five against Kidderminster. Powell's header. Donnelly. No way through. Back to Harding. Ben Harding for older shot. Joel Grant. Harding once more. And here come Rushton. Only rank into aim for Chandler couldn't find him. Four up front here for Aldershot. Mendes challenging with Howell. It's definitely opening up this game. It's, no one's getting back. I want to see too many offsides at this moment in time. Defenses are, both defences are sitting so deep at the moment. to find a winner or oh, we're going for another 30 in from Burgess free had a ranking well ranking I mean you must only you must only hope that he's offside because that miss was a poor poor miss it's coming in and he is onside no question about that that is a poor poor header that should have been the winning goal without a shadow of a doubt Michael Rankin should have won the cup here for Rushton. See, Tanta Shield should have been in that Rushton dressing room. He's screaming, he's going absolutely mad. He knows he should have a winner's medal when he's covered tonight. Here he goes again, Rankin. A little over two minutes of stoppage time to go. He could have been the hero there. 
corner to Rushton. Well, he's just been in so many, so many times. There's been opportunities, opportunities for Michael Rankin, but he's just lacked the quality this evening to finish him off. And that was his golden opportunity to make a name for himself. And he blew it, to be perfectly honest. He's shaking his head in despair. I think he knows it now. Woodhouse with the corner. Newman couldn't get to it. Outstretched leg of gear. Tomlin went for the drive, no real power in it. Donnelly. Challenged by Woodhouse. Approaching the final minute of stoppage time. Are we to have late drama? Mendes, the man who put up, it was rather Joel Grant looking for Mendes. Joel Grant has been fouled. Free kick to Aldershot. Just wonder where he can do here. Needs to be a little bit more clever. They just need a little bit more than just pulling the air in that box at the moment. They've won most of the battles in the box, rushed them when it's been in the air. he's got to do and try and really here is just make sure he hits the target and maybe they might be able to pick the pieces up after with virtually the last kick of the game Scott Donnelly held by Roberts This will be the last action. And it's a long throw from Rankin, the man who's just had that golden opportunity to win it for Rushton. Across the penalty area and away by Donnelly. And we will have to have another 30 minutes to try and settle the winners of the Satanta Shield final. It ends 1-1 after 90. Junior Mendes with the goal for all the shot. A minute later, that man, Andy Burgess, with the leveller. First blood to older shot after good work by Hudson. Mendes bundled in his fourth older shot goal, but 60 seconds later, Andy Burgess with the equaliser for Rushton. But then they could have won the Satanta Shield. Michael Rankin, totally unmarked, headed wide of the target. So we will definitely have another 30 minutes and possibly penalties. Rejoin us in a couple of moments' time for 30 minutes of extra time. Now here we are, we're into extra time. Penalties in the next in half an hour if nothing changes. It's one all, all the shot one, Russian diamonds one. And with the order shot manager Gary, last thing you wanted, wasn't it? Yeah, we're in a cup final, it's gone to extra time. We're still in the game, but you know, we're pleased to be in a cup final. It doesn't matter if it's extra time or not, we want to win it. Was your heart in your mouth when Michael Rankin had that chance? No, it's, the game's been very open, you know, both teams have had chances um, and that's the nature of the way we play, so uh, my heart rate didn't raise uh, too much. Yeah, I don't believe you. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. So, it's older shot to get us underway in the first period of extra time, 1-1 one, one after 90. Aldershot, of course, had this in the quarter-finals. They had it in the semi-finals, and now they have it in the Satanta Shield final. New ground for Rushton, who haven't needed it in any of their games, as they beat Cambridge, Kidderminster, Northwich and Halifax on the way to this final. They did all that in the 90 minutes. And Rankin, their jumping, could have won it for them in the 90 minutes. Here's Burgess, Woodhouse has crept in, back to Chaloner, super block by Newman. Tomlin is onside here. Straight at high next. Didn't Jaimez take that well as well, made it look so easy. Good strike by Lee Tomlin, straight at Jaimez, but he still plucked it out of the air very confidently. By the way, confirmation there that Aldershot have brought this man on, Danny Hilton. It's their final switch, he's replaced the leading goal scorer, John Grant. 
Rushton still have one more substitution to make if they wish in terms of freshening it up in this 30 minutes of extra time Hilton here's Donnelly Woodhouse win it back Rankin is onside there's no flag here the man who could have won it in normal time has put it wide in extra time. Well, I mean, initially he did look offside, but he's kept going. He's kept going, he's kept strong, he's got it out of his feet quite well. Dame's only opportunity to shoot across goal. In the end, he scuffs it. He's got to hit the target. For me, he's coming that position there. Got to work the goalkeeper. And he doesn't do that for the second time of asking. He couldn't believe it. Gary Hill turned away in disgust. Come on. Well, I think he has to. I mean, he must be really disappointed with Michael Rankin. I think that's his first opportunity and he hasn't delivered. Incidentally, 1-1 here after 19. It was 1-1 in the league as well at St. James Park. Exeter won, Droylston won. A Logan penalty getting a point for Exeter, which, remember, keeps them out of the top five, still in sixth. We go to Stevenage on Saturday, and you will see that live 5:15 here on Satanta Sports One. Well, in terms of digging deep now for these players, both physically and mentally, it certainly is, and I think that just of the older shot players, a lot of it will be mentally for them because you know, right, they're young players. There's, you know, they've got a lot of fitness inside them, and but they've played a lot of football. It's about that mental side tiredness that just might affect them in the end. I'm sure I said something similar, similar at Crawley and they went on to score four goals in added time. Here's Smith, who remember started the evening at right back. Played centre half ever since the 26th minute when Winfield was forced off. Harding. Gooding's ball, flicked forward by Lee Tomlin. Donnelly. Trying to pick out Joel Grant. Done well again, Curtis Asano. Done really, really well this evening. once more Kirk Hudson Kirk Hudson has scored in three of the four rounds in the Satanta Shield now he's scored in the final as well and he gives Aldershot the lead in extra time he was so positive as well Kirk Hudson the ball just comes comes him in there from Scott Dolly just comes across the front of Gooding good strike but I'm sure Dale Roberts will be disappointed, beating on his near post. But I just think it's a sheer power. And the fact that he was caught unawares that the shot was going to arrive. That's what Dachi done it. So you have to give, give everything now to Kirk Hudson. Took the opportunity really well. It's been positive all evening, everything he's done with his runs. But that strike was so instinctive. Right in front of the... All the shot fans behind that goal. Now, the last time they scored, they were pegged back within a minute. Here come Rushton trying to do the same again. Woodhouse lost out to Harding. Danny Hilton. Just need to keep possession now. Don't rush, just try and get a few touches on the ball and just trying to take the pace out of the game now. Now they've got themselves in front. It's all about Rushton now. They just need to slow the tempo down a little bit. Asano. I've been really impressed with Dean Smith since he's gone to that central defence. He's looked so comfortable and far, far, should say far more comfortable than what he does at fullback in that position. Well, he's behind. We've seen two golden opportunities from his centre forward ranking go begging at 1 1. 
Oh, they've been punished for those misses. That's what, no, that's what normally happens. That's what most of Gary would think. If we don't take one sooner or later, we could come out, finish this game losing. Still plenty of time left. Just know that Rushton, somewhere along the line, they are going to get an opportunity. Oh, the shot before that was handball by Tomlin. The referee didn't and said play on. I think Martin Cole was more concerned about the way he threw his arm Tomlin into that one. Yes, it was handball, but I don't think he was too happy about the way he swung his arm when he jumped. Here's Tomlin. Let me point you in the way of a very important match for the Greys player Ernie Cooksey, who, of course, suffering with cancer at the moment. There's a charity match organised on April the 27th. Yeah, that game kicks off at Greys Athletics Football Club at three o'clock. It's, it's Greys Athletic being All Star 11. No one actually knows who the players are at the moment in time, but I'm, but I'm told that Jamie Day is sorting that one out. Straker to Joel Grant. Corner to Aldershot. This is what they should have done initially when they went in front, just keep possession. Get the ball as far away from their goal as possible. They've definitely killed the tempo of the game. They've stopped Rushton pushing on. It's up to Rushton to try and make things happen now. All the shot have done their bit so far. Donnelly's corner. Clear it's high in the air by Gooding. Sano's header back from Newman. Smith. He's done well again, Dean Smith there. This complete Martin Cool and Gary Waddock are not too happy with the lines because they're saying that was offside initially. John Challen was offside. But Dean Smith in the end dealt with it. Rankin with the long throw. Gooding goes down, penalty. Aldershot are furious from the original decision that they thought they were offside and from the resulting throw in, Rushton and Diamonds have a penalty. And it's involving Rob Gira again from a long throw. Flicked on again by one of their players. Gooding comes in and I just think he's just jumped over Rob Gira. He's, he's, worked, he's, worked that, he's worked that one himself. I think the referee's been fooled by that one, in my opinion. Well, the man who equalised in normal time now has the opportunity to equalise in extra time. Can Andy Burgess do it again? No, he can't. Mikel Jaimez is the hero for the penalty spot again. I have to say, I mean, I'm looking at I'm thinking of Andy Burgess, quality player of a quality strike, but I think I've never seen a goalkeeper catch a ball from a penalty. It is well struck, hit with power, but to actually catch it as well is phenomenal. What a good save that was by Jaimez. Here come Rushton again with Howell. The offside flag is at that time, and I tell you what, Jaimez has stopped an awful lot of controversy there because Gary Waddock and Martin Cool were furious that that throne was given in the first place. They thought Rushton were well offside. Well, I did have my doubts. It's just right in front of us here, Steve. And I was looking at John Chandler and I think myself, if he goes and gets that ball, he's offside. But he wasn't given offside and it nearly cost him dear. Mikel Jaimez, who saved the penalty in the semi-final shootout from Woking's Damien Batt, has done it in extra time from Rushton's Andy Burgess, and he keeps Aldershot in front. 
Just looking at Heim, he's done great Heimers, but I'm just seeing I think my man at the moment for older shot looking at Dean Smith, he's limping, he doesn't look confident at the moment at all. Limping and he's bending down, they're worried about him. Joel Grant. This might come for Donnelly. It's still Donnelly. Joel Grant once more. Challenged by Woodhouse. Corner. Great deal of noise around the recreation ground at the moment. With all the shot in front. And after that penalty save by Mikel Jaimez. Joel Grant with the tricks near the corner flag. Now Straker. He couldn't keep it in. Your right marks. Dean Smith is struggling. He's getting encouragement from his manager. He has to carry on. They've used all three substitutes. That's right. He hasn't played a lot of football, Dean Smith. Wouldn't be involved on Saturday. I just think Gary just wants him just to be there for the lads, be there for the calls, help them towards winning their first trophy of the season. Here's Mendes. Joel Grant. Junior Mendes. Harding. Hand ball against the older shot midfield player. Just flicked up in his hand, used it to keep the ball close to him. Dean Smith is on one leg at the moment out there. He's a body, but he's at half pace. I mentioned the amount of games, it's just his 17th out of the 53 this season for the former Chelsea trainee. Yeah, he's done well this evening, he's moving to an unaccustomed role and he's just really in fear. I mean, Rankin was quite strong when the game started. He's got in there in that role and he's done really well against Rankin. He's out jumped him, out fought him. But when Rankin's got away from him, Rankin's going to miss two golden opportunities. One of them could have won the game for Rushton. Here comes Rankin with the throw. That came off Dean Smith. They're just stretching at the back post, couldn't do anything with it. The man who scored and now missed the penalty. We had one save to be technically correct by that man, Mikel Jaimez. When we talk about older shot, quality goalkeeper. Well, they've got a quality goalkeeper in reserves in the reserves as well. Mikel Jaimez has really come to light in this competition. shot unbeaten in their last 18 games in all competitions since losing at York in January 2-1 in front now in the Satanta Shield final what a season it's turning out to be for those supporters 28 to 1 to win the Blue Square Premier before a ball was kicked 14 points clear with seven games to go and 2-1 up now in the Satanta Shield final in extra time with a little over 15 minutes to go. I think we have to say the way they've gone about at the moment in time, they've played, played such good football. The last team I saw win this division playing such good football was a team managed by a, a Mr. Jan Mulby, which was Kidderminster, with a, with a Mike Marsh in the side. They was absolutely fant fantastic, the football they played. What people said hadn't been seen in this, this level of football for a long, long time. One minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half of extra time. Woodhouse. Dean Howe, challenged by Rob here. Had to be spot on there, otherwise Dean Howe would have been in. Hilton and then the effort from Ben Harding 
ended up on the roof of the stand. The addition of um, Danny Hilton gives him that little bit more drive, pace, energy and enthusiasm. I'm sure the two centre-halves are enjoy not enjoying, I should say, playing against him. Advantage, older shot at half time in extra time. Kirk Hudson, four minutes into it, put them in front. And then, nine minutes into it, Mikel Jaimez with a penalty save from Andy Burgess. After a foul by Rob Gear and Andy Gooding. So, older shot lead by two goals to one with 15 more minutes of extra time to go. It'll be a quick drink and a few words. And back they'll go for another quarter of an hour. Gary Hill has seen his side have a penalty save, and Michael Rankin missed two golden opportunities. Indeed, he'll be at the moment, he'll be frustrated. I'll tell you what, Michael Rankin will be worried, be worried as well. Going back in that dressing room, if Rushton don't go on and get something from this game, Knowing what Gary Hill's like, he'll straight away let him know how he feels about the situation. Let's have a look at the goal again. Just four minutes into extra time, Kirk Hudson scored it. So he wasn't. Donnelly just rolls the ball to him and he just takes the ball to his side, into his path, across the front of Gooding. And I'll tell you what, it's a quality finish. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He used the run of Gooding just to take him, get around him, and it's a good strike towards the near post. Dale Roberts won't be happy, he's done well this evening so far, but he struck it so hard and just caught Dale Roberts so unawares, could not deal with it at all. He's got such pace, such drive, Kirk Hudson. It's definitely improving under Gary Wallach at this moment in time. Final substitution for Rushton, it's an enforced one. Curtis Asano can't carry any longer. So Abdel Halim El Colti, 27-year-old Frenchman, makes his 11th appearance for Rushton in the second half of this extra time. Rushton need to score, or the Satanta Shield is going to Aldershot. They get us underway in the second half of extra time. Rankin. If it does finish like this, he will look back on what might be. Chaloner, that will be the goalkeeper, Jaimez. He was caught there by Tomlin. I just wanted to have Tomlin was tucked a little bit as he went for it, but it's actually his challenge on Jaimez. Wasn't a good one. He was definitely late. Ball comes in from Burgess. Just seeing the challenge. He tries to run. He was definitely pulled back there by Ricky Newman. His challenging wasn't a good challenge. Was a good one. It's definitely intent now. as is okay. And Tomlin has been shown the yellow card. It's gone to three at the back as well. Russian and Diamonds El Cotis come on. Just gone to a, a left hand side pushing on. They've gone to three five two. Just been pushed further on, push on pushing on to Rob Gera. Striker. Forward by Newman. Here's Danny Hilton. Went for goal. Super save by Roberts. Then the Woodward and then in from Donnelly. That might just be the goal from Scott Donnelly that wins the Satanta Shield for Aldershot. It's just all about having enough players in the box to pick up the pieces after your teammates have had shots that may have been palmed away, hit the post, and that's what happened there. Danny Hilton could have come wide to Kirk Hudson. He doesn't take a shot on himself. As he goes here, good power, good save. It was again by Dale Roberts. Kirk Hudson actually goes in the near post, but it's, there it is. Maybe one of the smallest players on the pitch. Scott Donnelly does following up, comes across the front of Gulliver in the end and wins it, but it's about Hudson here, shot here, off the, off the post. And in comes Scott Donnelly, 
finishing off. That's what they talk about managers, midfield players who ain't frightened to take that gamble and push on. Scott Donnie is not afraid to take the gamble and gets his rewards. His third goal of the season, and all three of them have come in the Satanta Shield. Just what is it about older shot on extra time and just scoring in extra time? We've seen them get four, now they've got two so far in extra time. And the big question is, can Rushton come back from that? They're trying here. to show Donnelly a yellow card for a late challenge. Oh, it's their own problem again. They just got caught out. All they've got to do sometimes is just clear their lines. That's all they had to do. Goes into that corner. I'd, well, I just don't see... Well, he comes in a bit late. I suppose you'll have, suppose you'll have to say that out. Because that side of the box had been a foul after the ball had gone. He's given inside the box and he pointed to the penalty spot and the same man, Andy Burgess, has assumed responsibility. Remember in the first half of extra time he had a penalty save. What's going to happen here? He scores and there's life in Rushton and Diamonds yet. I just think that is their own doing, their older shot. Sometimes, as I said before, you've got to defend ugly. They've just got to clear their line. Good free kick this time. Hyman's just got caught in his heels. Didn't know this time which way it was going. Hoping it was going to go to his left. Burgess changes his side. He believes now they've got an opportunity to get back in the game. But it all stems from all the shot. Causing their own problems again in defence. Just got to clear their lines. Well, another 11 minutes to go. What have they got in store? An injection of belief into Rushton and Diamonds now. I think that has to be. He'll drive him on Gary Hill. They've had a little bit of luck, good fortune. It's been handed to him on the plate, the opportunity. Again, they get in front all the shot, and again, they allow a goal to be scored within a minute of it. I tell you what, what character from Burgess to step up again, having had one saved. I think anybody who knows Andy Burgess saw us heard about him. He's not afraid of anything. Harding. Hit by Gulliver. Rankin jumping with Smith, and Chaloner's picked it up. And this is Chaloner. And it's still Chaloner. That was an opportunity. It was a free against one situation. And he's tried to get his foot around the ball and just pull it into that top left-hand corner. And he never caught it right at all. Just bobbled up and it, the ball went straight. Look at him. He's trying to get his foot around it. It just skipped up in front of him. He was unlucky in what he was thinking. It was a good idea. Just didn't have the execution at the end. Well, Aldershot thought that the ball could have been play played out there because they had a player down. The goalkeeper's now down. The managers have had a few words over it as well. It's all hutting up here. It is. It's what we call cup football. It's the desire to go on and win a cup competition, have the, med have the medal in the cabinet. Well, Jaimez... It's gingerly getting back to his feet here. Yeah, it's this opportunity again. It comes through, they've got a three against one situation. Chandler takes it on himself. Tomlin's looking, looking for the ball. He was asking for it, but I just don't see how Lee Tomlin can have that ball. He's been marked. Strikers coming across to him, they're having words. But it's very, very heated. There's having a desire to win, but there's stupidity as well. That was uh, Chaloner's touch. This is El Colty. That came off gear. Smith is virtually playing on one leg at the moment. What drama we've got at the end here. And real spring in the step for Rushton. Oh, it is. That's giving them a, giving them a little lifeline now. I just think they might have to move Dean Smith out wide and maybe just spin gear it just into the middle. Just to, if anything, they've got to go wide to score a goal. Here's Hilton to Donnelly, who thought he'd won it. Still might have done, of course, unless Rushton score. Eight minutes left in extra time. Harding out to Hudson. Just got to take the sting out of the game at the moment. Donnelly gets it back from Harding. 
Connolly goes for it again. And to thread it through to Joel Grant. Burgess clears. Tomlin to Chaloner. Here's Tomlin. And still Tomlin. He goes down, referee says no. I've been surprised that the referee lets his play and will give free, but he just thrown himself to the floor there, Lee Tomlin, looking for something. It was more in hope. Here's Gooding. Away by Gear. Smith is struggling just to get out for the offside at the moment back there for Aldershot. El Colty's cross. Smith it was with the header, he was being fouled. Talk about a brave effort from Dean Smith. It was a brave effort. He's won the header, but I just think Michael Rankin's almost pushed his head through the ground. Comes in there, I mean, like, throwing himself there. Look at Elias when it was hope. It was a good challenge on him. I told you before, Lee Tomlin is a fiery character. Both with opponents and fellow teammates, it would seem, in the heat of the moment. Just what you look for in football, especially cup football. Every, everything just gets all heated and these people just look at all these fans here. They've seen a good game this evening. It's been a terrific atmosphere. And there's just a few pensive looks there from those older shot fans at the moment. Forward by Burgess. Here's Chaloner. So sure Rankin will get to that. Oh, he has. And he was caught as well by Straker. Yeah, Straker allowed him to come across him. All he had to do then was stay patient, and he dives in. It was a silly challenge. It's a position of strength is for Rushton. It was a silly challenge in the end. Didn't get to the ball. Should have just stayed patient and held him. Forced him back. Here comes the free kick from Woodhouse. Had it was wide in the end. I think Jaime's had that one covered as well. Didn't really dive for it. Header comes in. Yeah. Just wide. Harry Hill, the fourth official, having words. It's that time of the night where emotions are extremely high. Five minutes of extra time to go. Rushton looking the stronger, but they need a goal. Aldershot hanging on. Gooding. El Colty. Smith across. That's how you defend. Done that in the first place. There'd be three one up rather than three two up. Outfield players up now for Rushton. In from Rankin once more. There's the touch. Smith at the near post for appealing for a penalty. You're right, they've had to. I don't think they're going to get three out of this oh, referee. It's going to have to be really blatant if they get the third one. But again, it's a long throw causing the problems. They've scored two. Here's Howell. They've gone short. Needs a good cross for Rushton. Straker with the back header away. That was a clever header in the end. He didn't know where his man was. He just got as much height in it as possible. They just can't afford balls into the box at the moment with Dean Smith and a lot of duress at the moment in time. They just really need to try and push up, squeeze the play at the other end. Once again, the long throw. Rushed and desperate to get a touch to it. They couldn't. Two from Aldershot. Then off Gooding. Joel Grant gives it straight to Curtis Woodhouse. Back up field from him. Chris Hope, the centre half, had stayed up there. And they have another throw. A lot of pressure at the moment. The last thing they wanted to do was give away another long throw. Just seeing it has been their main strength all night. Dead balls as Russian in general played it. They haven't looked like a side who can and do score a lot of goals. This is definitely where they look well at the moment, their position of strength. Aldershot defend that, back in from Gooding. Oh, a complete miss kick by Gear. El Colty. Well, he's just got to hit that across the goal, didn't catch it right at all. 
They've looked vulnerable leaving in older shot, but those long throws into the box. D David Winfield not playing. Makes a big difference. Haven't got his height in there to help him. If it stays the same, Gary Hill will look at the video of this and think, how are we 3-2 down? That's right, and at the moment in time, he seems to be taking his frustration out on the fourth official at the moment. He's questioning every decision. Dale Roberts with the long ball forward. Anywhere will do for Aldershot now, inside the last two minutes. Our side flag is up against Hilton. Here's the one final push left in Rushton. So it's all about now. They've just got to get one behind the ball at the moment. Just try and get, you know, at least, at least two banks of four. That's all they've got to do at the moment, just to go on and win, win the Satanta Shield. That's all they have to do. Hold the shot. Stay tight. Stay, stay compact. Forward by Andy Burgess who scored a penalty and had one saved on this dramatic evening. Approaching the final minute of normal time in extra time. It's now or never for Rushton and Diamonds, 3-2 down. Rankin with the long throw. Needs a touch, Gulliver couldn't get one away by Newman. That weren't one of his longest throws, I think he's run out of strength. Michael Rankin taking so many of them this evening. They've got to squeeze up now, they're staying far, far too deep. Poor delivery by Gooding. Cleared up field by Harding. Hudson will chase, goalkeeper did very well. A few more seconds wasted as far as Aldershot are concerned. And they have a throw as well now. That's the one, that's the one they want, that's, that's just take, well, I should say, that's just released a lot of pressure now. Should have done better than that, Burgess, trying to take it, the most difficult part on his, of his foot. That's why Gary Hill looked at him with disgust. Forward by Hal. El Colty. Away by Newman. Tomlin, two minutes of time added on, and Jaime's missed it, and it's in. Would you believe that? The man who could have won it in normal time has drawn level in extra time, Michael Rankin. Well, we needed to do something to maybe keep the manager off his back. And it was just sheer perseverance in the end that actually got him that goal. In the end, I don't think we're going to see that too many times. A player on his hands and knees heading the ball in two inches from the line. The ball just comes in again. They allow the ball to get into the box. Rob Gear has got to do better and deal better. Be stronger. And it's all about Tomlin just gets the ball in. Jaimez doesn't hold it for the first time. And there he is. I think he actually puts it in with his nose in the end. Tomlin's... Sheer strength and drive and got the ball across the box. Jaimez couldn't hold it and he pushes it in, rolls it in with his head from two inches across the line. He's worked hard to try and score Michael Rankin, but I don't think he'll score an easier one than that. What drama. The man who could have easily been the villain with those two misses could now be the hero and looks as though he sent it to a penalty shootout. I think we're looking at it that way now, definitely looking that way. But I'm sure they're going to try and get the balls forward as, as quick as possible. Rushton believing they can go on and maybe win it. They can't believe it, those Rushton fans. They were 3-1 down in extra time. And they've come back at 3-3. It's time to nominate five penalty takers, I think, Mr Waddock. Never thought we'd have to do this twice in a season. Forward by Donnelly. Surely there isn't another twist in the final few seconds of extra time now. Ranking. Still no referee's whistle. 
He's trying to set in Tomlin on the far side. It's Tomlin, and it's denied by Jaimes. The last kick of the game, Rushton almost snatched it, but they've come from 3-1 down in extra time to force this to Tanta Shield final to penalties, and Michael Rankin is the man who's done it. Let's remind you that Kirk Hudson put all the shot 2-1 in front, and then Scott Donnelly thought he'd won it. That after a penalty saved by Jaimes to deny Burgess. And that goal from Donnelly thought they'd won the Satanta Shield. 3-1 up they went, but then there was more confusion. Donnelly, having scored, conceded the penalty. The same man stepped up again, Burgess. And then Rankin, who could have won it in normal time, poked it home in extra time to make the score after two hours of football between these two. 3-3, and the Satanta Shield final will now be settled on a penalty shootout. What drama? We'll take a quick break. Be sure to join us again in a couple of moments' time. To the recreation ground. What drama we have had tonight in the Satanta Shield final. Gary Hills, Rushton and Diamonds trailing 3-1 in extra time. They pulled it back to 3-3 with literally the last kick of the game. Two hours of football couldn't separate them. Remember, we've had two penalties already in extra time. Now we're going to have a penalty shootout to decide who is going to win the Satanta Shield final. Gary Hill is staying with his players out there in the centre circle. And we're just waiting to see who's going first. Gary Hill is uh, getting called back out of the uh, centre circle. He has to watch the penalties from the dugout. An incredible drama we've had this evening. Aldershot, remember, got here on penalties. And it is going to be Rushton and Andy Gooding to take the first penalty against Mikel Jaimes, who's already saved one tonight from Andy Burgess in extra time. The teenager who arrived from Coventry in January with the first penalty of this shootout. This to give Rushton the lead. The huge draw tells you it's advantage all the shot already. Well, just looking what Jaimes was doing, he's actually come out, he's kicked the ball to him, Andy Gooding. Jaimes has put it on the spot, he's adjusted it, Gooding. But in the end, I think it's taken so long, the walk was a slow walk, and I think he just had too long, too long to think about in the end, and that's mostly one of the reasons why he drove it wide. Here comes the man who scored all the shots third in extra time, and then conceded a penalty from which Andy Burgess scored. What an evening Scott Donnelly has had. He scored in the shootout in the semi-final against Woking at that end. Can he do the same here in the final? Just! Robert's got a hand to it. All the shot lead in the shootout by a goal to nil. Well, got a hand to it, just wasn't a strong hand in the end. It's just the power that took it in the end. Guessed exactly where it was going and he was unlucky. Good fortune was there with Scott Donnelly. Here comes Dean Howell, the left back, in his first season. Just one goal for Rushton since he moved from Grays. They're one down after the first round of penalties. What can the 26-year-old do? He can score. Absolutely top quality penalty. He's a confident lad and he was confident with that penalty as well. To see now again, absolutely a perfect position. It takes a brave man to do that, and he proved he's one of them. Ben Harding, who scored in a 2 1 league game here against Rushton and Diamonds, the former MK Dons player. This to restore Aldershot's lead in the shootout. A big intake of breath from Harding, but he coolly 
Sends Roberts the wrong way. That's another substitute is coming and taking the penalty. This time the substitute scores. Good penalty. Keepers right, perfect position. Well, here comes Andy Burgess, who's already taken two penalties tonight. The first of which was saved by that man, Mikel Jaimez. The second of which he scored. The psychological games are going on between the two. Which way will he go this time? One out of two so far. Here comes Burgess, and he scores again. That's identical where he tried to pull it before when Jaime saved it. This time Jaime's go to the right where it went the last time when he scored. Good penalty. Right into the side netting. It was always going to be difficult to save. To keep the goal of course, even. have been here before. Ricky Newman scored in the semi-final shootout against Woking. His manager hoping he can do so again. And if he does, he'll make it 3-2 to hold the shot. Which he does in emphatic fashion. And is that at the same spot for Dean Howe put his? It's another brave play there. Good pace, good height, perfect area to put a penalty. Curtis Woodhouse, the professional boxer. Only one player missed so far from six penalties. That was Andy Gooding of Rushton. What can the former Sheffield United player do here? Long runner. And he smashes that home. Straight down the middle of that one. Didn't even bother looking to go either side, just went for power. Always believing the keeper's going to dive. Exactly what Jaime's done. Here comes Kirk Hudson who scored, of course, in extra time. He scored left. in the semi-final shootout as well against Dale Roberts in the Rushton goal. Just off the crossbar to keep Aldershot's 100% penalty record intact. Well, he's got... <laughs> sometimes you've got to do it with power, and he's done it with power, hits the underside of the bar, comes down the back of the net. He's going to call that a good penalty. I think there was a few nervous people in the crowd so Rushton need to score Chris Hope the captain the 35 year old who's only scored once this season the central defender to keep the dream alive for Gary Hillside Mikel Jaimez in the goal asking for the volume to be increased by the older shot fans he knows when it was this situation in the semi-final Woking missed he knows if Hope doesn't score, the Satanta Shield goes to Aldershot. Pressure on the Rushton captain. Here comes Chris Hope. And he doesn't score. And Aldershot have won the Satanta Shield. And Mikel Jaimez is the hero again. The first of two possible silverware in the hands of Aldershot. They won the semi-final on penalties. And they now have their hands on the trophy, courtesy of another penalty shootout victory. Jaime's, abs Jaime's done absolutely brilliant. All even that his penalty saves have been absolutely top draw. And beyond this, look at this game, I was a little bit worried just in the fact of Rushton coming to, coming to the penalties on a high after the, getting themselves back into the game. But again, they held their nerve on the shot. Quality penalties got them through it in the end. They're on for the double. They most certainly are. And their number two goalkeeper, Mikel Jaimez, the 23 year old, is once again the hero with that save from Chris Hope. Rushton gave it everything. They clawed their way back into it in extra time. It's a horrible way to lose a cup final. They are left to contemplate. Aldershot are left to celebrate because they have won the Satanta Shield and we'll have all the reaction next. Welcome back to the new recreation ground. That is the Satanta Shield that is now Aldershot's after incredible drama here tonight.
They have won on a penalty shootout after it went to 3-3 after extra time. The officials just going up to collect their medals. And that is the man who could have been lifting the shield for Rushton tonight. Their captain, Chris Hope, who had the crucial penalty saved by Mikel Jaimez in the end. He is the losing captain in the losing team. Such heartbreak for Rushton and Diamonds, who got themselves back into this in incredible fashion. 3-1 down, remember, in extra time. And ranking with virtually the last touch of extra time, forced the penalties. And in the end, Gary Hill's side of the losers as Aldershot, just as they did in the semi-finals here against Woking, win it on a penalty shootout. But Rushton gave it everything played a huge part in a very dramatic night parts. They certainly did, and to be honest, it was a fantastic game. The game could have gone either way. It's just a shame that there has to be a loser in the cup game, especially in the final, because Rushton didn't really deserve, deserve to lose this game in the end. It was a quality game of football with both sides playing some wonderful stuff. Both sides really competing well as well. Disappointed Rushton fans, but as you can hear, courtesy of the hero, Mikel Jaimez, Aldershot are now coming forward to receive their medals. They now have one trophy in the cabinet and they can concentrate on the remaining seven league games if they need all seven to clinch the league championship as well. They will get their medals from Brian Lee there, the chairman of the conference, and Trevor Reese, the director of sports at Santanta Sports. Their first ever National Cup. And that shield very shortly indeed will be picked up by Ricky Newman, the captain of Aldershot tonight. And Gary Waddock has put some silverware in the cabinet of Aldershot Town. And as I say, he can now concentrate on making it a league and cup double in the Blue Square Premier. Currently 14 points clear of Torquay in second, having played a game more. Both sides, of course, used 14 players tonight. It's been a squad effort. It's been a very good effort as well. In the quarterfinals, they went to extra time. Semi-finals, extra time, and a penalty shootout. And the same again tonight. They lifted themselves up, having been 3-1 in front in extra time. And they won the penalty shootout. All the shots out have won the Satanta Shield. Their first piece of silverware is in the cabinet. And there's large, large hopes of it being part of the League Cup double. That's exactly right. It's a great feeling to win one trophy, but to go on and win the ultimate, as I call it, the league, makes it even, even better. And for Gary Waddock to achieve what he's achieved all so far, I can only say it's testament to the work he's done in the short space of time at Oldershot Football Club. There's nothing like that winning feeling, and Oldershot have a real taste for it now. They certainly have. I mean, they've been had that little taste of just been getting closer and closer, stronger and stronger, the taste of success in winning the league championship. I think they'll step even closer to it in the next two weeks and go on and win it. But tonight, just give them that little bit of taste of what to come. The recreation ground has been jumping all night, but it's been deafening in the last two or three minutes. They've had some barren spells. But now, the good times are certainly back at Aldershot Town. And I think we can now get some reaction. The manager is waiting to talk to us with Rebecca. Thanks very much. I've got the manager and the captain. Ricky, I'll come to you first. It was a battle out there tonight, wasn't it? Yeah. But congratulations. Great game, lots of goals and everything. That had to go to a penalty shootout, didn't it? Obviously, I thought we'd sort of thrown it away at the end. But obviously, say, in one way, it's the nicest way to win. Got a penalty. It's exciting for the crowd, so delighted to have won. When they equalised in the last minute with Michael Rankin, like you said, you must have thought you might have put, you know, thrown it away. Yeah, and after that, they had another chance, actually, so they could have nicked it at the end of the save. But Miguel made a great penalty save, obviously. He made a bit of a mistake for the last goal, but, as I say, you know, just delighted to have won. Gary, I bring you in a roller coaster of emotions this evening. Talk us through your final few minutes standing there. Well, you get good value for money when you come down here, that's for sure. Uh, no, it's great for the lads, you know. Uh, had everything in the game again, and uh, we've come out on top, so we're delighted. And your first piece of silverware, maybe of two, I know you won't talk about that one at the moment, but what does it mean to you as a manager, Gary, to, to have a piece of silverware? That's fantastic, not for me, for the players, for the club, for the, the chairman and the board of directors, but most of all for them, fans behind the goal. I'm absolutely delighted for them. 
Ricky, a line for the fans. They've been fantastic again tonight, haven't they? Yeah, all season. I think, obviously, when Sir went out of the league sort of 16 years ago, you know, the fans have supported this club through thick and thin. I've got a lot of friends that are fans on all the shots. So, tonight, it's getting this bit of silverware, and hopefully we can go on there and uh, do the double and, you know, get the league. So, you know, delight for the fans. Good luck with that. Thank you both of you very much, Lee. Congratulations. Fantastic scenes here at the Recreation Ground. Wonderful scenes. Uh, from Aldershot. Paul's getting carried away there. You weren't even looking at the camera. You're overwhelmed. I was just watching those players walk around. If it's Steve Atwazor, just watching them taking it round to the fans and that. And it must be good for a lot of those players. They've never, ever done anything like that before. And, I mean, be honest, you can look at this tournament and say, well, it's just another fixture. But I'll tell you what, when you get to the final and you actually pick up the silverware, then I'll make a difference. Let's take your all the way back then to... The second half of this game, where Aldershot, of course, scored. And it was Junior Mendes after 71 minutes. That's right, and it was just about men. He just threw himself in now, and it's a sheer perseverance and his, and his work effort that got him in there. But again, it's, it's all about Hudson, his pace to get to the byline and just pull it across there and invitingly for someone to take on the calls. Mendes took on the calls, and that's why they got, got themselves in front. And, of course, they were only in front for 60 seconds at that time because Rushton wouldn't lie down all evening, would they? Uh, that, that was Sir Mendes giving Aldershot the lead, but then this happened 60 seconds That's later. That's right, you just fall asleep for a split second and you could just be behind, you could be in front. Rushton got themselves level back into the game so quickly and it could have taken a sting right out of Aldershot, but they kept themselves going. It's just Rob Gira just got caught out by the touching, but just in between Chandler's legs and they got themselves back into the game. Fortunately for Rushton, it just kept him alive. And we have to make the point that before extra time, Rushton had, and they won't want to see this again, golden opportunities to win it. Oh, they certainly did, and we're looking here, and he must rank him, just thought it was, all, it was going to be an awful night for him. That should have been the winner, without a shadow of a doubt. That should have been the winner. This one here, he gets himself in a good position, gets the ball out in a, in a good position to strike it, and he actually ends up cutting across the ball, not catching it right. It was awful what he'd done there. No conviction in the finish. And that's, and that's one of the reasons why, in the end, he was so fortunate and so pleased when he got the goal that got himself, well, got himself to the penalty shootout. Aldershot still celebrating behind, as you can probably hear, uh, down on the pitch. And why not? Because uh, they had to go all the way uh, to do it tonight. That, of course, took us into extra time, didn't it? 1-1. Uh, one, one. And then Kirk Hudson popped up. Oh, he certainly did. And... I mean, it's just there. I mean, he, he knew exactly what he's doing. I think he just caught Dale Roberts completely, completely out. He just, he was not thinking he was going to shoot. I think a lot of people thought he was going to pass it across the box. He just swings his body round and strikes it so firm. And it caught, it catches Dale Roberts out, gets his hands to it. Fingertips, I would say, but not enough to keep it out of the net. And they kept going for more goals as well. Uh, Scott Donnelly was the man who got the third. Now, when Aldershot went 3-1 up, did you think that was it? All done and dusted? I, I thought it was all done and dusted, Steve. I, I didn't want to come out and say it because so much can happen at this level of football, what we've seen in the Blue Square Premier. In cup games, anything can happen. But we've just seen there, it was just, it was just all about... Danny Hilton really here, takes a shot on, good save by Dale Roberts. There's Kirk Hudson again, hits the post, but there, there he is, Scott Donnelly following up, which I think any top midfield player should do, always be available in the box to pick the pieces up. And that's what he done, Scott Donnelly, in the end. And it was a quality header, coming in there with a centre-half, not the biggest of players, but he's brave enough to come there and mix it with a Rushton centre-half. Just sitting there, the power of the shot there from Hudson, Hits the post, comes out to Donnelly, and I think he believes that he's won the cup for his club. We certainly thought so, but he was yeah. involved in a pivotal moment after that because Rushton just wouldn't lie down, would they? He certainly wouldn't. And I just think it's serial about Dean Smith. Doesn't clear his lines properly, tries to play football, and he gets caught out by El Cote. And I just think he comes across there, all right, he catches him late. It's a foul, but was it, was it actually, was he going to go on and do anything? Well, but in the end, the referee gives a decision. And that was a penalty, Burgess, second of two, but he actually scores this one in the end. And they believe they can come back. And as we know, Steve, they do come back. And that was real drama because it was literally the last kick of the game and it was Michael Rankin who, of course, had those chances in normal time. What happened here, Parks? Well, <laughs> it was just one of those finishes, Steve, where the ball just comes across the box, it was good work again by Tom Lynn, gets the ball across and Rankin virtually just squeezed it across of his head, he's never going to score an easy goal, I've seen many of them scored in training when you're taking a rise out of somebody, but to actually see it, 
in, in a competitive game is something I don't think we'll see many times. But again, it's ranking. It's just, well, he can't believe luck has fallen his way after his two misses he's done earlier in the game. And he, he knows and believes that Gary Hill is not going to give him a rollicking after. As you can see, we've been joined by the winning manager, uh, Gary Waddle. When you see all those goals again, did you think you'd done it at 3-1 in extra time there? Yeah, we put ourselves in a good position, but uh, I have to say you get great value for money when you come down in. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want penalties again, but we got them, of course. 100% uh, record from Aldershot. These were the two misses from Rushton. Yeah, that obviously was a bad miss, the first penalty, but uh, give us a, a bit of confidence. Miguel made a fantastic penalty save during normal time. And he's pulled off that one as well. Not a particularly good penalty, but uh, look at him, he's enjoying that moment. Well, he's certainly been the hero in the semi-final and the final for you, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done very well. He's been really patient. He works extremely hard in training. He's got a fantastic attitude. Um, and again, it's his night. And what kind of reward is it for these players in, in that dressing room, all the hard work they've put in this season? They've got a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no expense spared. <laughs> no, it's great for them. They've worked extremely hard. And, um, you know, we've, uh, we've won the game tonight. But, uh, we've got another seven uh, cup finals coming up. Uh, so uh, we have to, we've got a massive game Saturday. We didn't want it to go to extra time and penalties. But, uh, you know, it's a cup final and we've come out on top. So uh, we've got no complaints. And a piece of silverware and that winning feeling, there's no harm for those players in there, does it? Uh, it's a young group of players, you know. Uh, we started off on day one. We wanted to achieve something. Um, and we've achieved something tonight. But, um, you know, we want to ch achieve something else. And now you can kick on. Now you can really concentrate on those, those seven remaining games, as you say. Yeah, but, you know, Saturday it comes around quickly. Um, you know, we'll have to make sure the players are, are ready and raring to go again for Saturday. You know, uh, preparation now and recovery is going to be vital to us. At least you've only got one thing to focus on now and you've got a trophy in the cabinet. Yeah, that's lovely. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we set our goal out on day one and uh, we want to achieve that. OK, Gary, lovely to see you again. Thank you very much indeed and well done tonight. Thanks. Thanks. That's Gary Waddock uh, live on the pitch here, the winning manager. Uh, let's hear from the losing one. Gary Hill is now with Rebecca. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Gary, you just said to me you felt you showed character tonight, but losing on penalties is always the absolute worst way, especially a cup final. Yeah, like, you know, of uh, course, at the end of the day, uh, when you lose a cup final, as you say, on penalties, it's disappointing, but uh, very proud of the players. I felt that uh, we had a lot of young players out there tonight. I felt we showed a great deal of character. And, you know, we've got beaten tonight, well, I honestly believe, by the league champions, league and cup double winners, very good side. And from a manager's point of view, as I've just said to the players, I think anybody who would have turned around and watched the game tonight would never have turned around and said that on a one-off game, all the shot were 41 points in front of us. So, uh, you know, very proud uh, in the sense that even though I don't think we should have went to extra time, we had enough chances ourselves, I think that... Uh, we look at certain things, but as I say, uh, good luck to Gary Waddock. Uh, he's always conducted himself superb throughout this season. Uh, him and Martin Cool and his team are a great credit to him because they're a great, you know, young team there with a lot of mobility, a lot of players. So, you know, good luck to them. And uh, the only good benefit what I like to feel about coming out of the match tonight from our point of view against all the shot we ain't got to play next season. OK, Gary, thank you very much indeed. We're running out of time. I have to leave it there. Thank you. Oh. Aldershot have won the Satanta Shield uh, competition tonight, the first of hopefully two trophies for them as they now look towards the league championship. And we're back in Blue Square Premier action on Saturday as well for a massive game in terms of the playoffs. Exeter 1-1, in case you didn't hear tonight, uh, against Droyles in the bottom club at St James Park. They now have to dust themselves down and go to Stevenage. What a game we've got for you on Saturday, 5 o'clock here on Satanta Sports 1. Well, what an evening's entertainment. Normal time, extra time, and then penalties. The end result, Aldershot Town celebrate. They're the winners of the Satanta Shield. We'll see you on Saturday.